Hello, happy Friday. Hello, hello. Welcome to the Chaos Coven. This is our weekly witchy hangout on Fridays. Um, we do this every Friday at what time is it? Eastern? I guess it doesn't matter. At this time. <laughs> um, I hope you guys have been having a really good week. Um, we're in the middle of... I think this is the last day of Sampain. So... I hope you guys have been having a good Sam Hain. I hope you guys had a good um, Halloween. So today we're doing a really juicy reading topic. What is your enemy up to? And I was inspired to do this one by Kat over at Weird is the New Black. I have wanted to do this one. That's the video that like uh, led me to her channel. And I was like, I love this reading topic so much. And I've wanted to do it for so long. I don't know why. I've just kind of been putting it off or not doing it. But finally, here it is. And we're doing this. So I'm excited. I'm a little bit nervous um, to get into this. Also, for those of you who are on Patreon, tomorrow we have our live stream for the month of November over there, and we are doing um, what is what, get, what is getting in your way. Um, something along those lines. So just a reminder, it's the same time for the live stream over there. Okay, so I'm already getting so many juicy messages here for pile number one. I'm trying to remember if I have any other announcements to make. I don't think that I do. Um, Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this. So as usual, I've got three piles. And, you know, of course, you can be drawn into more than one stack. Perhaps, like, you do have a lot of uh, more than one enemies here. Hey, I'm not judging. Okay, so um, this is pile number one. It is the Eros Energy. All right, pile number two, Father, the Father. I hope your father's not your enemy for some of you, but, I mean... We deal with all kinds of things here in this life school. And um, pile number three, the desert. Okay, so I'm going to hold all three of these up. Pile number one, pile number two, pile number three. One, two, three. Just be drawn in to your stack. Keep in mind that sometimes the ways in which you get drawn into the pile can tell you a lot about your own situation or it has some kind of a hidden message. You might be drawn to one card, but your energy really is encapsulated in the other two. Um, if you don't feel like you're um, attracted to that, the pile that has like your enemy's energy, you can try to pick another pile and see if that one fits better. And then maybe debrief with yourself about what your intuition, like why did your intuition lead you to the other pile? Don't make yourself paranoid, but just kind of leave yourself open to if there is any message that um, you maybe didn't see that is trying to communicate to you or trying to come through here in some kind of a different way. Now, before we actually jump into this, Alex, my husband, he was like kind of clearing out the space energetically this morning. And he was like, there's a lot of energies um, that are being moved through here. And he did say that he he was just kind of trying, he felt like there was a lot of enemy energy that just really didn't want to be revealed. And he was just kind of clearing it out and politely asking them to go and saying like, look, this is for um, these people, these souls in order to help like with their back end processing work. So I just found that to be really interesting and wanted to pass that along here to you guys. So, all right, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this. Ooh, I'm like excited. <laughs> okay. As he says, sometimes a person can see you as an enemy when you begin to set boundaries. Yeah, and I guess like, you know, enemy is one of those words where it can mean different things to different people. And um, I'm also like, enemy sometimes can be an anti-teacher. And I actually feel like this is linking into pile number one. So I'm getting right into this message. I feel like this person is um, an anti-teacher. Like maybe this person actually does fancy themselves a teacher of some kind or they want they want to be seen in a certain light, this person, your your enemy, if you guys were drawn into pile number one. Um, and I think they do teach people a lot of things and they, they are here to teach you something, but it's like they're what they're teaching you in terms of, I think how you have to like cope with them and deal with them and, you know, manage yourself around them in order to keep yourself safe. Um, you are actually learning a lot, but it's not what it is that they think they're teaching you. So I feel like this person like may th like share certain things with you out their mouth and they think that's like, oh, I, I'm teaching people so many things, but, and they are, but it's just, um, through their own like blindness and their own ignorance, like to themselves and to their own situation. Because really at the end of the day, I'm feeling like this person is like actually really, really lost. Um, and we do have the Eros energy. So I think there's something here about this person. I Like this card, it's just so strange to me in this deck because I don't know, I always think like Eros, you would imagine this to be like very vibrant, very colorful, maybe a lot of pinks and a lot of reds, a lot of blacks, a lot of something, but it's just black and white and like kind of grayscale. And I find that to be really, really interesting. And I feel like this person maybe gives the appearance of being like erotic or like, um, you know, very sensual, very like, they use um, some kind of like 
sensual sort of an energy, but it's like hollow or it's not there. And I do feel like this person, your enemy right now is under a spell of karmic judgment is what I'm getting. So, um, they, they are, I'm hearing like an induced karmic period. So some of you have like actually asked for some kind of karmic justice here in this situation. Cause you've seen this energy for what it is. And you've, I think you actually have actually learned what it is that you were meant to learn here from this person. So the lesson's really no longer serving you. You're able to see it clearly. Um, you're able to kind of call this out. And I feel like it has induced this like learning period here on this person's side. I feel like this person is being in this like induced state of isolation, but they're really not seeing it that way. This person is actually having to struggle. They're having like a really difficult time um, with being like isolated. Um, and they're like the, the flash, because this is a person who tries to use they're very externally focused, like with themselves and with the world around them. So all of their like quote unquote coping mechanisms, which the way this person gets by, it's like they do have certain coping mechanisms, but they're wrongly applying those coping, coping mechanisms. They're like overly relying on, I'm hearing things like fashion or like, I'm hearing like giggling or I don't know, some something in the external world, like their personality. That's what it is. Regardless of, you know, if what I just described is this person's personality or whether it's something else, they're over relying on like uh, managing their personality to like get the results that they want in the world. <laughs> now, I don't know why. Um, I'm seeing moaning Myrtle in my head from <laughs> Harry Potter. So um, I feel like this person might be a bit of a moaning Myrtle. Like I think they're kind of moaning right now. And this has always been beneath the surface with this person where they do kind of have, I don't know, like maybe a doom and gloom attitude or it's like it kind of this inner, they don't present this way. Okay. But I feel like there's kind of like, um, like Eeyore from Winnie the Pooh. There's kind of that like very depressed energy. Um, but also it's not very active. So this is a person who doesn't think that like within, I think this is maybe what bothers you about this person is they really, at the end of the day, I think they try to put on some kind of an appearance, but they don't feel like within themselves, they have like the skill set or the ability to actually like engage with life and to they themselves get themselves out of like certain situations. Instead, I think they try to like appeal to other people to get them to get them out of the hole that they're in or something like that. They try to implore others to take some kind of action on their behalf. So this is a person who is kind of a master of disguise. I'm hearing in a master of manipulation. I think you picked up on this pretty readily, but what you need to understand is that um, the veil is kind of dropping and a lot of other people are seeing this because there's something where like um, time is up. Now I'm still seeing moaning Myrtle. <laughs> And okay, um, so kind of what I'm getting is like, <laughs> okay, how do I describe what I'm seeing? Um, like I'm seeing moaning Myrtle, okay? And then I don't know if some of you who are like here in the US, okay, like I don't know if people are gonna get this, but there used to be this show on TV called Ally McBeal. And this was like back in the day, okay? Um, and it was about the, it, Calista Flockhart is in it and she, it's about this like lawyer. She's, she's a successful lawyer and she works for this lawyer, law firm, but she has this kind of like, I don't know, ditzy, um, kind of personality to it. So I'm seeing that and I'm seeing the two like kind of side by side. So let me try to tell you what I think this means because, um, moaning. Okay. So there's something about a bathroom and I don't know what it is. Um, there's something about a bathroom. So, okay, like I said, I feel like this person has been um, maybe very suddenly put into a period of isolation, but this person's rebelling against that. And so even though it's like, maybe they they could be dealing with something like they've lost their job. I feel like they've lost their standing. They could have lost like a friend group or a community group. I just feel like people are not really wanting to be around this person. So they really have like, I don't know, maybe nowhere to go, like to a job or something like that. I don't know. It just feels like this person is, um, they really don't have any place to go. So they're actually like rebelling against this and they are going out to some kind of a place that is like more public in order to, again, try to like receive attention or try to make friends. Um, but the place that they're going is like not exactly a place to make friends. Now, for some of you, this person didn't lose their job and they're trying to do this like at a workplace, but there's definitely a vibe to wherever this person is going, where it's like people have things to do and then there's like a place like the bathroom where it's like people go there for a reason, but it's also like a temporary time out and it doesn't have to be like literally the bathroom. I'm also seeing like a gym. So it's like this person might go to the gym like early in the morning. Um, and like obviously when people are at the gym, they're not trying to talk to you. They're trying to like get their workout in. But then when they go to the locker room, I'm just kind of seeing this person like hanging around, you know, and not understanding that they're bothering people or that they are like imposing upon people. And this person's just like, yeah, we're all, um, 
you know, people are showering and they're trying to do their hair and stuff. And this person's like, yeah, we're all just like bitches together, having talks, having conversations. Like, what's the tea, girl? And these people are like, I have to get to work, you know? And they're like pulling on their pants and they're like trying to leave. But this person, and I think this is part of what bothers you about this person, is there's a way this person thinks they are in their mind. This person has main character syndrome. That's, I think, what I'm like actually trying to describe. But they're not, it's like annoying and it's, weird and people are finding this person strange and it's like they are because this person needs to become more self-aware they need to pick up on the fact that who they think they are in their head and how they think they're coming across to other people is not in fact how this person is coming across they're more like moaning myrtle so i feel like this person could be actually like moaning but they're doing it because this person on some level knows that they there's something about them at this current time that's not appearing the way that this person likes to usually appear and it might have to do with their physical appearance but i kind of think it has more to do with like their the position in their life like I'm hearing down and out like this person's kind of like down and out but they're still trying to like this person likes to be associated with certain types of people and I think you are like the type of person like in your personality this person likes to be associated with and th that's where we're getting this Ally McBeal um kind of a, an energy okay now um so yeah, just hear me out. Um, so they have this like kind of moaning myrtle attitude. That's what they're actually doing. And um, moaning myrtle is like, um, I don't know, in like middle school or something like when she died. So this person is like kind of coming off like, there's something about the way they communicate where they think it's like cool or something, but it's actually like immature. And there is something here about age where that's why this person's getting called out for this or why I think people used to make excuses for this person and it is they are entering a, a period of hermitude so you know a hermitude rules over like 55 and older like that kind of stage in life some of you could be asking about a person like that but it doesn't have to be because for some of these people i'm getting like well maybe they were a teenager and now they're in their 20s and people used to make excuses for this person as to like their behavior they would be like okay well I'm hearing like maybe this person is just underdeveloped or maybe this person is just really young at heart. But I think you knew that it wasn't that because I think you and like something about like your group of friends or um, the other people that like work at your job, I think you have a genuine like you've kept the spark alive in yourself, you know, in some way, shape or form where you are. Um, but you take care of your business, though, like you take care of like your responsibilities and you're like age appropriate, but you still manage to like have fun and to like keep that spark of innocence or like childlike wonder. So you know what that looks like, because I think you have it. And I think certain people that you associate with like has it. So, you know, like when you're seeing it, I'm hearing it just ain't it like it just ain't it here with this person. But they don't. I think this person may blame you. They may think like, um, well, you were just excluding me because you're being like a mean girl. Um or they might be trying to, con that could be the moaning that this person's doing to other people. I don't think they're, they're more mo moaning about their own life and like, woe is me kind of a thing. Um, but yeah, so um, I think people were kind of make excuses like, oh, okay, well, you know, this person is a little bit young or maybe they are going through a hard time or something. But now there's something about like the new stage of life that this person is in where it is kind of obvious that like something's like wrong. And what I think a lot of people passed off as like a, a um, like a childlike wonder. It's just immaturity. Like that's what it really is. It's a stuntedness. This person I think is internally stunted about like age 13. And I'm not saying that to be vicious or to be mean. Um, I just think that this person, um, they're really being encouraged like their entire life. If they just step, cause this person doesn't step back to just like let things kind of calm down. They just, they think the fix to everything is in the external world. So this person just like hastily and without wisdom, like rushes to try to like impulsively like stop the bleeding they don't actually stop and reflect but i think this person likes to maybe present like they're more measured or more well thought out than they actually are but basically if they like took a step back and they actually reflected everything in their life is like a big neon arrow that is like pointing into their own heart like you need to go to a period of hermitude and you need to assess you need to withdraw in on yourself and you will be better served by that and it's not forever but it does need to go on here for a while in order to cultivate wisdom and i think that's where you and this person are like absolute opposites where i think you're at opposite ends because there's something about you that i think presents very similarly if you just took a very and i mean a very superficial perspective which some people may be inclined to do because Again, maybe it's a workplace where it's like you're just in and out. So really all they have is like a two-dimensional snapshot of you or maybe they only have a two-dimensional understanding of like what this behavior is. And I've noticed this and Tarot has actually taught me this where um, like when I'm looking at these cards because I've always, I struggled to like describe this. And I think this is something you actually deal with in your life because I know it's something that I'm, the cards are always trying to speak to this and like just to give you your validation and I don't always do the best job of explaining this, but have you ever noticed that like the best of the best energies and the worst of the worst energies often present like very, very similarly and it's kind of counterintuitive because if you take a linear view of life 
and you think that, okay, well, everything like kind of unfolds on this like line, it makes you think that there are poles, you know, like good, bad, hot, cold, um, male, female, like whatever. And like, yeah, some things like you can't understand like that, right? But it would make give you the impression that like these opposites, and in this case, I'm talking about best of the best, worst of the worst in terms of like intent and character and things like that. You would think that they present exact opposite, but they don't. It's actually a circle. And so like these energies are like right next to each other. They present that way because the worst of the worst doesn't want to actually do the work. They want to mimic something that they feel they can extract resources for. So who are they going to mimic? The best of the best. And so I think that's what's going on here in this situation. So there's something about you that on the surface presents very, very similar, but it's actually the, the energies here like laughably. And I think you know this. I think this is why this person's your enemy and they're meant to kind of trigger you um, is like, you present you you could not be more different like you really could not be more different and um i think this person they try to commiserate with you but really you have very different backgrounds and this person like really truly cannot understand like the depth of experience that you've come from so this is like the opposites that i'm getting where i think you are actually um coming out of a period of hermitude so i think like in your life you have maybe been the hermit i'm getting for like an extended period of time some of you this is like a natural personality trait that you have or like um, you could just be like um, an intuitive person. And I mean that more in the Myers-Briggs kind of a sense where you like to take in information and then you process the hell out of that information instead of, um, again, being so like overly connected with the, the material world. Um, so I'm just seeing like an extended period of hermitude. And I think you have an immense amount of self-awareness and regardless of how you present externally, because I think for some of you too, it's like you didn't really focus too much on how you were presenting. You were trying to build up your skill set in something. You were trying to be credible is what I'm hearing. <laughs> oh, you were trying to be credible, like not just in a field or with a skill set or, um, in just as being a human, you know, you wanted to be a real one. You wanted to genuinely be authentic. You, I'm hearing, I don't know who I, like, this is you when you're younger, I think. I'm hearing, I don't know who I am, but I will know one day. And then, um, and I just want to make sure that I'm in alignment with that. Like, I think you've, um, maybe I'm hearing slow bloomer. And then I'm also hearing from Mulan, uh, the flower that blooms in adversity is the most rare and beautiful of all. I think you have actually faced quite a lot of adversity. And this person doesn't really understand that. I think that this person has faced adversity, but it's like, um, it's, they have faced adversity. This person has, okay? But it is different to what it is that um, you've experienced and you've definitely done different things with it. So you kind of are meeting at this intersection I'm getting where you are coming out of a phase of hermitude, but you've paid your dues, you've done your time. And so now you're blossoming into an empress. Like I'm literally seeing this and I've seen this in other readings too, where it's like um, spirit for whatever reason, I think it's the age of Aquarius. They're trying to take these more Aquarian types that are different, that aren't afraid to share their freak flag, that maybe have been... Either they've lived on the fringes of society because society has refused to make space for them or they just um, have sought out like those spaces because that's where they feel more comfortable. They're different on the inside, even if they maybe and they, they honor that difference. So like these Aquarian type spirit is actually trying to move to the center of things and plant in soil and have those be like um, the leaders like here at this current time as we're making that change, as we're making that transition to the age of Aquarius. So I think that's been your path and your trajectory. And this person actually looks up to you quite a bit and they... Um, they have a bit of admiration, but this admiration is like really unhealthy because even though they admire you, it's like they try to compete with you or they try to tear you down and then they expect you to like them. And <laughs> this person like kind of has no self-awareness is what I'm getting. They have no um, social skills, but they want to seem on the level. They want to seem on your level and they want to seem on um, maybe your friends. I'm seeing there's other people, but that all have like a similar quality because this person also likes to associate this person you guys take different paths i don't know why but it's like this person doesn't think that they can actually like express um their own skill set they have to rely on other people so they it's like power by proxy where they they want to be associated with you and you like your traits or people like you they want to they want to be adjacent so that they just get seen in a similar light to you and i it, i think you sense that there's some like energetic thieving or some kind of like I'm hearing sycophant. Maybe you feel like this person is like kissing your butete or like um, just trying too hard. Like that's like really what I'm getting. And I think you're kind of like, how are, um, how are you not embarrassed? <laughs> like that's what I'm hearing. Um, so like going back to this Ally McBeal thing though, like next to the moaning myrtle. Okay, so I think this is like kind of maybe the energy that you guys are similar. Now don't be offended by that, okay? Cause um, she comes off like a particular way. But what I mean is that um, she's she is feminine and she is like maybe career oriented or something. Um, but like, okay, so this person, your enemy, 
<laughs> they like to be around Ally McBeal types that again, like they are feminine and they are social. Maybe they are going their own way and they are like trying to do it. They, they like to be associated with those kind of people um, because they fancy themselves that way. But um, in reality, this person, you know, Ally McBeal is like a successful lawyer. Like this person has not put themselves through the paces. They have not like gained a skill set or anything. They just want to be like near people who have or like who have actually like gained something from themselves. Um, but I'm also getting like the type of person that will like put on like a tweed vest or something and like glasses and be like today I'm bookish and I'm gonna tell everyone I went to MIT and you're like what <laughs> that's not all there is to this it's like this person kind of thinks that they can method act their way like through life <laughs> and that people won't question it and you know what is really 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 sad and it is a mark forever on like humanity <laughs> in the age of Pisces is I think they got away with it I think they really, really tried it. And I think they really, really actually got away with it for a long time where people just were just like, okay, you are what you say you are. And so this person <laughs> probably annoyingly believes in manifestation, but you know they're off their rocker with it. Like that really they're just talking about lying and like finessing people. And that's not the same thing as manifesting. Um, or like they're into spirituality. Like, I don't know, like because of that, they're just like, if you believe it, then you are it. And you're like, you need to go to MIT if you're going to tell people that you went to MIT. Um, you know, something here like that. So they just want to come off like they're Ally McBeal. Now there, there's another thing why that is show is like sticking in my mind because everything in that show that happened that was crazy went on in the bathroom. Like I'm telling you, there's something about the bathroom where it's like everybody seemed normal, like in the office. And then they went to the bathroom and all of a sudden you would just see like people being weird or doing crazy stuff. So maybe that's something going on with this person where it's like, okay, well in a regular nine to five, you know, when this person's in like kind of a controlled environment, they seem on the level with other people, but then um, when they socialize, when they're in the bathroom and, but this person likes to think of themselves as Ally McBeal. It's like, um, oh, like, oh, like, you know, and I'm, I'm smart and I'm accomplished, but yet a little bit ditzy and a little bit feminine. Um, but I'm still like kind of capable and everything, but really this person is moaning Myrtle. And that is how they come off to people. They come off 13. Um, they come off like weird. They say weird stuff to people. And like the whole thing of moaning Myrtle in the Harry Potter is, um, remember when they were doing the cauldron in there and, um, they, they were like, well, maybe we shouldn't do this in here because um, we could get caught. And then Hermione's like, nobody comes to this bathroom anymore because of Moaning Myrtle. Like, that's how you got introduced. So it's like, I think people are trying to avoid this person. Like, even if this person is, I feel like this person is displacing people. It's, uh, who are like just trying to get their workout in. They're just trying to go to the bathroom. They're just trying to this. They're just trying to that. And like, have their peace and then this person comes along and now they're like well I can't go to the gym before work anymore because moaning Myrtle is going to be there so now I have to change my whole schedule this person doesn't realize that they have that kind of an effect on people they then they just want to they they want to turn around and then act like well everybody's just being mean and it's like you lack self-awareness you have no idea how you are affecting other people we are all displaced because of you and then you you think that you can demand that we tolerate you or that we like you or that we see you a type of way that we actually don't. Now, like I said, I think this person actually has been through things, but I'm seeing this, okay. Um, I'm seeing this story in my head, okay, it's juicy. So, um, okay, who am I gonna tell you this person is like for the sake of privacy? <laughs> um, okay, so I grew up on a lake. So this is a memory that I have from my childhood. And we'll just say that this person is like uh, one of my friend's moms. And so I was at their house and we were all like out on the, the back porch and we we're looking over to like their neighbor's house who had a really nice house, but he was like a vacationer. He, he had like a vacation house there. And her mom like just looks over there and was like, they have everything. Um, like, of, of course they're happy because um, it was like this guy that she was talking about was like very successful, but he was like a gay um, white man in his like 50s or 60s. And that's relevant because um, she was like, you know, they have two um, white man incomes and no children and they have a house in the city and they have all these vacation houses. So like, of course they're happy. And like her kid is like right there and her kid was like, but you don't regret having me, right? And she was like, oh yeah, no, like, of course I don't. Um, but she was like salivating over like the life that this person um, lives. Now, why that I think is like coming to mind is because I don't think this person is living the life that they wanna live, first of all. But it's like they look out at other people and what other people have. And even though it's like when, when 
like normal healthy people do this it's like yes you can see that there are certain things that like factor in right okay yes like all those things have factored in but what this person does is different than that they like zero in on like these like particular things and then they try to apply it to their own life now um how do I put this? I don't know if I even want to say this part, but um, this person was like, had a reputation for trying to like associate with people kind of like that, that they thought had money that like kind of ticked all those boxes, you know? And then, um, but I heard that actually a lot of people thought that this person really liked women and, um, but just was like with these people in order to try to associate like with money. That's what I'm talking about. Like, I think that it's actually more interesting of a story. Like they needed the something about this person's life path is spirit was really trying to put the pressure on this person to connect them with their hermit energy earlier on in their life. This is like a karmic repercussion. So they needed to go within. They needed to be the hermit. I think a lot of these people might want to be alone, you know, or um, yeah, they needed to connect with a the skill. They needed to prove to themselves like that's what they incarnated to do to prove to them, themselves that it doesn't matter if you are like all those demographic things like the white male that has this or that. It's like, no, you can do it too. Spirit wanted this person to know that like develop yourself, apply yourself and it's the longer route, but like you're going to do it. But instead this person tries to associate like with other people. It's all social tricks. It's all social game. Um, and this person like see how she's got the diamond like in her mouth. She just this person just uses their sexual energy, I think. Um, they just apply it where they think it's going to get them something instead of going after the life that they want, the people that they are naturally attracted to and something that they are genuinely interested in and making themselves well versed in that, which is what I think you represent to this person. So I think you trigger this person, but you trigger this person in like a happy way of like, what if you actually did that? I think they see in you somebody who is successful in the way that they want. And I'm, I'm going to say this, this isn't going to be for everybody, okay? But for some of you, I think this person may actually have a crush on you. And you might think like, no, because they're interested in like this other type of person. But I'm telling you, I think this person associates with, in a romantic way, people whom they can get something from. It has nothing to do with genuine attraction. I think they front with this, but I think, um, I don't think there's genuine chemistry. I don't think there's actual attraction. And for some of these people, they're attracted to the entire opposite gender. Um, they just are associating with like, in, for instance, like men that they think are powerful in order to get what they want out of life. Cause they think that that's the only way to get it. And if they're not it, then they need to associate with it. Even though spirit put this person in here knowing full well that they were attracted to a different kind of person because it's all like a test of authenticity of like, do you understand that like you need to become like the fullness of yourself? So I think you represent that path to this person of like you are actually a person who did that. And so this person greatly admires you, but then they just, they're falling into their old modus operandi, which is just to try to take from this like superficial level or to mimic. So I think this person might be trying to throw out language of authenticity or um, that's why they're coming off moaning murder because they're like, I think you are a person who's um, dealt with hardship or something, but you're trying to overcome that. Um, now, another thing is um, there's something about like a type A personality. And I think this is like something different. Okay. Cause I'm also seeing like, uh, I, I was in this class and it was uh, industrial organizational um, psychology. And my professor was hilarious because he had a million degrees, but he was like retired. So he taught that class for fun. And he was just in his like, I don't give a F era. And so he would just like kind of go on and on about things that I'm not really sure were related to industrial organizational psychology, but honestly, it was like, I learned a lot in that class. It was like life lessons. He'd be like, do you know what streams of income are? And I would be like, no, I don't think this has to do with our lesson, but why don't you go on? <laughs> like, you know? Um, so one of the things he really harped on and on about was type A personalities versus type B personalities, like particularly in the workplace. And he was like, listen, you all are here in college and you're building your success off of probably, let's be honest, a type A personality. You have a lot of places to go, a lot of things to keep track of, a lot of things to do, and it's your superpower and you're building your success off of that. But what you need to understand is that the studies show that it's bad for your health and that you're gonna kill everyone around you. <laughs> it was like you said it just like that, like just, um, you know, it shaves years off of your life, like for yourself, but also like if you manage teams or like if you influence like workplace culture or something, um, you need to learn how to be a little bit more relaxed, a little more type B, you know? And I literally was like, Jessica, 
you're going to kill people, <laughs> you know, like you need to learn this. So I think maybe you are that more type A personality where, again, you have put yourself through a lot of paces. You have like a lot of, you know, you're going to do like whatever it is. And I think you recognize it as like, maybe I'm a little high strung or it's something that you want to like maybe curb in yourself where this person, um, doesn't have a type A personality, but they're trying to mimic it because they think that it makes them cool which is also why people don't like it. Cause I think you've recognized that like, okay, well I can be a little high strung or even though I'm like, go, go, go. Like it's not exactly pleasant to be around and you're trying to kind of mitigate that. But this person is like trying to mitigate it. You are, you have self-awareness. You understand how that like, and if it's not a type A personality, then I feel like it's something about your personality where it's like, you kind of are like, well, I want to work with that a little bit better. I need to be a little bit more conscious about it. And this person is just trying to mimic it, even though they haven't like used it or um, done it in order to like, um, again, it's just they're trying, they, they look outwards and they look at what people have or who people are that are, that they seem as successful or that they see as like society recognizes them as successful. And it's almost like they're showing me this um, changing like the beauty standards, you know, how like, um, like the Kardashians, they have that like surgical center, supposedly, like there's rumors that they have that like in their basement and they're always changing their looks. And now like literally um, beauty standards and like female bodies are, it's like trends and stuff instead of again, like just trying to be like naturally who you are. And they're showing me that like people that society considers like successful kind of changes like that with the trends as well. So this person comes off like disjointed and um, fake and like weird. And um, I think this person may be trying to make some kind of 180 degree turn. Like they were, um, trying to maybe like, I don't know, associate with like an elite type of like, I'm just so elitist and I'm this and that. And society is kind of like, ew, like that's really not cool anymore. It never actually was. We were just all oppressed and like, you know, didn't have the internet to know that there's other people like us kind of a thing. So it's like this person associated with that for a long period of time. And then now they want to try to act like they're bohemian or like they're, I don't know, like you in some way or something here like that. But it's like a 180 degree turnaround. And it's like, that is not you. You are clearly fake. Like there is no self-awareness coming from this person at all. They just try. And you know what this person, like, I think their superpower is that they're a blank canvas. And so people can kind of, if you're not self-aware yourself, um, and this person also, um, tries to make people, they're codependent and they try to um, form codependent relationships like with other people who are potentially insecure. And I think that somebody here has left this person. Again, they're being enforced in this period of hermitude and that is the best thing for them. So if um, if this has been a partner of any kind and you like parted ways, you fired them, um, I just heard, you know, this really isn't a good fit for our company or any company. We need somebody who can pull their weight. We need somebody who's actually went to MIT. <laughs> you know, we need, um, your tweed vest is like really killing it. It does look very nice on you. It does not suffice for actual knowledge um, or skill set. Uh, you're a great con artist, you know, maybe we could put you on a billboard sometime, but that's, you know, work that's here and there. It's not, you are not the VP <laughs> like anymore, you know? I think this person is just like really being confronted with that. And that is the healthiest, best thing for them. But this person does kind of seek out people who are insecure and who want to be seen. Again, they mirror on that level. Like they want to be seen on the level. They want to have somebody here on their arm that like presents a certain way. And this person is your girl or your boy if you want somebody who's going to present a certain way. But I think people kind of end up playing themselves. They end up calling themselves out that they have that by associating with this person. And I think you saw it. And I think that you were just very much like, no, but then again, this person moaning Myrtle, I think this person is like, whenever somebody calls them out, like this is, this is the power of the hermit that I think you have that this person doesn't. Whenever somebody literally reflects back a genuine thing that this person is, that they don't, that they lack self-awareness and that it, it's just not, this ain't it. They reject it. They just reject it. And then they moan about it. And then they um, try to paint it out like, you being honest with them or holding a boundary was you victimizing them. And so it's just not good to be around people like that because they can never take responsibility. And I just feel like nobody should be putting up with this for any, I feel like it shouldn't have been, a, I think it, it shouldn't have been allowed to get this bad is what I'm hearing. Like this person had to have been around people who were enabling, like this person needs an enabler and they need like multiple enablers that they can hook in by like that moaning, stuff but i'm hearing like just shut up like whoever it is that this person has been like trying to moan to is like do you ever stop like it's not it's not cute and i'm hearing that um line from the taylor swift song like how long will it be cute all this crying in my room it's not cute anymore because either this person is no longer like an adolescent um and their parents are like getting fed up with them or something um, and they're friends and they're like, we're all maturing. Why don't you try it? Like, you know, um, or this person is like reached an age where it's like this, 
is no longer acceptable. So your enemy is, is actually getting their karma. Like I said, I think some of you actually have like induced this. This person is an anti-teacher to many people. They do hold up kind of a mirror of like, will you tolerate this? Like is, will this level of superficiality suffice for you in your life, in whatever position, you know? And I'm hearing it's like more damning the closer this person is to you. Like if this is a, if this is a partner, if this is a, somebody that you're trying to rely on, I mean, it's kind of like you need like somebody here. I feel like there's somebody next to this person who's having this realization about themselves. Like I shallow how, I guess, like, you know what I mean? Like I was just superficial as hell. Like, how did I not see this person? But I, it's because of their own insecurity. So somebody here is like having to face, wow, I'm really insecure that I would put up with this. And I don't know who this person is. It could be a parent. It could be a partner. It could be somebody who's like aligned with them in business. But they were like, I shouldn't have been putting up with this treatment because this person does not deliver. Like they just do not deliver. And all they do is it's like excuses. And they just, they think putting on a tweed vest is like the solution to the problem here. But this is no longer being allowed to continue. And I also think that like what some, I'm also hearing manic pixie dream girl. So um, this person could have come off like manic pixie dream girl, again, very like sexy or whatever. But now I think if somebody's around this person, they're like, you're really just a mess. It's honestly making me sad. And I think that we need to get you some sort of assistance. Um, this person may require some level of assistance. And that could be why this person is um, in a period of isolation. They could have had to be um, to like go to like a rehab or some kind of like intensive self-care because people are starting to realize that there's something wrong. And this is a person where I feel like there's something wrong. And particularly I'm getting like around middle school time, this person could have seen something that was like actually shocking. And I'm hearing this may be a wound that they've passed on to a child. Like if they have a child that's around middle school, I'm hearing cheating. So it's like for some of these people, like potentially what sparked this is like they had a middle school age child that saw them cheating like caught them saw them in all its glory like cheating on a parent and I don't know if they've said this out loud or if this person saw this but I feel like they saw something that was just um changed them here in some way but yeah this person just really doesn't have the ability to see like the energy that you have been through they're trying to make a very superficial connection with you, but unfortunately for them, you are a very deep person and you have done a lot of your own hermit work. So you expect the people that you connect with to also have some like a deeper side to themselves and to be able to match you on that level. You don't look for their superficial connection. That's what I'm getting. That's what that's where this person kind of went wrong with you. And that's why they don't understand you is because there used to be around superficial people who accept this superficial veneer. And so like with you, you actually do expect somebody brings some depth to the table and this person just can't deliver. So um, this person is getting their karmic repercussions. Like I said, I think it's um, isolation, but this person, that's kind of like the highest form of like punishment that this person can have. Not that spirit is trying to punish them, but it's like what it is, it's, it's kind of like taking all the things that they are that are hollow and shallow and this person is using used to using to manipulate people. Um, because this person, it's a lot about themselves, I'm hearing, like their appearance. And I don't just mean that they'll use attractiveness. I mean, this person may even um, try to look disheveled or something in order to elicit pity. That's what I'm saying, the tweed vest. They'll, they'll like, they change their personality, like they change their clothes and they use clothes and their appearance or something. I also think there might be a way that this person dresses that they think makes them come off a type of way, but really it makes them come off very adolescent, you know, or like they don't have adult responsibilities or that. Um, but again, they don't understand that, that it's, they don't understand it. But so um, spirit is just trying to take away their ability to manipulate through guile and through this superficial, shallow energy. And if this person is with a partner and they're spending a lot of time at home, I mean, this partner is just like done. They're at their wits end. They're like, I can't listen to you moan anymore, Myrtle. <laughs> like you have to go somewhere else. Um, yeah. So this this person is basically stuck I think they're like stuck at 13, to be honest. Like, that's like really what I'm getting. It's like, oh, I'm hearing Mean Girls. Oh my gosh. So remember I said like there's something that's happening in the bathroom. So I'm picturing like in Mean Girls where it's like all the popular girls and they're looking in the mirror and they're like putting on their lipstick and stuff. That's what this person thinks is going on. But really it's Moaning Myrtle. <laughs> um, okay, yeah. So that's what I'm getting for you guys, pile number one. Um, well, I'll just, I was gonna pull some cards to like, for advice like to help you deal with it look teachers at the bottom of the deck remember i said this person's an anti-teacher you might be literally a teacher of some kind like to them the words that come out of your mouth actually line up with your own experience you can you can back them up 
um, with experience, with your actions. Um, you have the ability to communicate knowledge, experience, skill, or wisdom. I think this person may be very jealous of this, but spirit is saying like you, and potentially you've learned something here with this person that you can pass this wisdom on to somebody else and be able to explain this in detail. Cause you know, um, like exactly what it is. This was connecting you with your willpower. This is, um, the athlete card, dedication to transcending physical limits. This is what you have. This is this hermit energy that I was trying to describe to you. Um, development of personal willpower and strength of spirit. So spirit is saying, look, this person was a teacher to you of some kind. Like when a storm comes through and a tree has to like push its roots deeper. Um, I feel like you had to maybe really dig deep or like find your own strength. Um, or, and I think part of it was like, again, you're blossoming now, but like you had to be tempted not to fight back with this person in some kind of petty superficial chintzy kind of a way you needed to not like try to compete with this person on a physical level or try to like suck up to your boss like you have an actual skill set you needed to rely on that and i think for a lot of you you have like whatever is inside of you whether it's a skill set your own self-awareness like you needed to not take the bait of this person um i think it's weirdly their version of play like they think that's playing with you if you compete you know um and I think actually that's the key to this person as well, where um, if you don't, it makes it very obvious that this person can't keep up. Like if you just stick to your energy, um, it makes it very obvious who is who and what is what. So don't take the bait here with this person for sure. Um, anything else, spirit? You may need to get away from this person. Um, because spirit is trying to put this person in a period of hermitude. Again, they're rebelling against it and they're displacing a lot of people in the process. Um, hedonist and okay this is you you um okay so do not compare yourself with this person like because i think you've seen this person try to embrace the good things in life try to associate with power riches fineries uh use their outfits use their looks in order to manipulate people that is low vibrational energy they can't back it up with their actions they can't back it up with their life experience um and so but don't associate this hedonist energy with only like the shadow attributes of this pursues pleasure to the detriment of health indulges at the expense of others that's what you've seen in this person but remember, I was saying like, you have been the hermit and you are now blossoming into the empress. This is a different quality of energy. You can bloom, enjoy the fruits of your labor, um, enjoy the fruits of your experience, embrace the good things in life, um, get yourself something nice, go on that vacation. It's not shallow or superficial when you're doing it. You have paid your dues, you have put in the time. It is not different. Um, or I mean, it is different here. You are a goddess, um, the feminine, you're connecting with your feminine side, your creative, your expressive side, but you've done the work to make sure that you understand like the foundational principles. So the feminine expressed through wisdom, nature, life force, and sensuality. This other person exploited the female nature and form for their own um, personal gain here in some way. I definitely think they use their sexuality. That wasn't actual sexuality. I really think whoever this person is like porking in order to get some money or something, I don't think there's attraction there. Either they like, like this, just they're not their type. Um, or this person's like asexual and they, they don't want to be with anybody. Or it's like they like the entire other opposite gender. It's just a scheme. They just see that like they just see people in terms of what they can get for them. You know, and it is something that's like really gross and like needs to get addressed. But like stay away from it. Stay away from it. Um, artists using talent as an excuse to mistreat others. Yeah, because like this person also like when they get in positions of power because they don't know how hard it takes some people. I think you're you looking at this person like I know how I got here, how did you get here? Like kind of a thing is sus because they don't deliver. And um, so you know that you've been put through your paces and so, and you also know what, it, know what it takes. So you are like benevolent, you try to like take care of people, but this person like, it's like whenever they get whatever it is that they want, they treat people very badly and they like to like show off and rub it in and seem better than other people. So again, I feel like they're trying to, there's something about your energy being very hermit and very Aquarian. So like very, um, you're like of the people. Yeah. Um, one time I had a mentor like for me in college and she, uh, this is like maybe the best compliment I've ever gotten. And she turned to me and she said, Jess, I can tell that no matter where you go in life and whatever it is that you do, you will never forget the struggle of the common man and you will never stop advocating to make sure that that gets seen. And I was like, wow, thank you. Like, I feel like you have that energy of like, you have, you've had your own come up and nobody handed you anything. And maybe you could have gone down that route of being more chintzy and being more superficial. You just didn't. And so, but this person, it's like, 
they're completely the opposite. They want people to be jealous of them. They want to like be up on the pedestal and they want, they don't want to be their best because they believe in being your best and they want to help other people be their best. They don't, it's not that with this person. They're unbearable. Like this person is unbearable whenever they get whatever it is that they want. So that's pile number one. <laughs> I can understand why that person is your enemy. And they're sad, like maybe emotionally, but it's like sad when you look at that person. Um, and they're also like kind of comical as a villain. Like um, I feel like this person may make like stupid mistakes or something, but like not even know. It's easy to almost like laugh at this person because they do things that are like weird or <laughs> they're just not self-aware. So I feel like they really step in it a lot or they say things a lot that are stupid and make people laugh or they, they put their foot in their mouth a lot. But I can see why this person is your enemy because this person is exhausting to be around. And I think you just really have to have no self-respect. So if you have like noticed this person's spirit is saying, well, at least you got your self-respect. <laughs> like you can rest assured that you got your self-respect. And if you were in a place of like insecurity in the past where maybe you would have aligned with these energies that you're growing out of that, you know? So, okay. I told her all of it very colorfully and thoroughly, may I add. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, all right, so let us move on to pile number two. Oh my gosh, that person's energy was so all-encompassing that it's like taking me a second here to, um, yeah, like to actually make this transition here. Oh, I didn't notice this, but um, this is pile number two and it is, the card is the number two um, here on this. So the number two or 22, 22 is a master number. So, okay, Ugh, I'm getting this. All right. I feel that this person that is now your enemy, they're in their villain era is what I'm getting. Or they sit on the precipice of like the dark and the light. Um, I think this person was actually partnered in some way, shape or form with the pile number one person. Um, either in business, like they've been associated with a person like that here for a long period of time. This is a person where I think whoever this person choose to partner with in their life. And again, I don't know what arena this is in because for some of you, I do think it probably is romantic. But for others of you, I think it does have to do with like, um, like funding or running a business or whoever they're choosing as their lieutenant, you know, like something here like that. It's like, it's going to push them down the path of the dark or the light because this person they kind of are giving me magician energy where you know who this person is as an archetype? Anakin Skywalker. This person is Anakin Skywalker, um, where they have a lot of skill and talent, but they sit right on the precipice of like the dark and the light. It's like, which side is this person going to go? So like, again, I'm seeing magician energy. They're very skillful. They're very talented in a lot of different arenas. Um, this person has the gift of the gab as well. Like doesn't mean that they're necessarily chatty. Some of these people could. Um, but they either they communicate very skillfully or they are very charismatic. Like that's another thing. But there's something here about like skill set, mind, um, communication and also like mercurial type. So again, like this something to do with yeah, mercury rules over like friends and things like um, I think this person could influence like quite a bit of people. But like I said, they sit on the precipice of the dark and the light. And unfortunately, I feel like this person for a lot of you, this is why they're your enemy, um, is that they are entering their villain era and literally like the father. Do you know that Darth Vader actually means like the father in like German or something like that? Um, so this person may well actually be a father or if this is a female, it's like they still have this energy of like the father um, or they might be associated with your father or a father something here is about a father um, but yeah they've definitely entered their villain era and this person has two sides of them and i think they've aligned themselves with this darker energy mm, and this was a part of your karmic contract okay because you believe in this person i do feel like you were the lighter side of this like maybe you are this person's child or something something about mercury um the people yeah okay like Whoever this person chooses to partner with, to look up to, to associate with, is going to lead them into Mercury, like the Gemini sphere of um, whoever it is that they're conversing with and around every day. And this is going to reinforce, again, whether this person is going towards the dark or the light side. I also feel like this person may present one way out in public and then they're in an entirely different way um, behind the scenes. And maybe this is like... They really try to keep a firm lid on this. I don't know if this is coming out about this person or not. Um, yeah, but I'm just, yeah, okay. Let me just try to kind of piece this together. So they were, they did choose the wrong path. Like they chose to associate with somebody dark, somebody vapid, somebody who didn't have an actual skill set, somebody who is maybe just like, again, 
the pile number one person, at the end of the day, we took a really deep dive into that, but they're a manipulator. So this person doesn't manipulate the same way as the pile number one person, but it has encouraged them to view manipulation as a legitimate tool. And I'm not talking about to manipulate means to handle with dexterity. This is in an, uh, an illegitimate kind of a way. So it's encouraged this person who frankly does not need to put on a mask in order to get somewhere in life. Like that's where, where I'm seeing this. This person doesn't, they have some kind of intelligence. They have some kind of maybe business acumen or skill set that they absolutely could have used to go down a legitimate path in life and build their own success and actually be the father um, and actually make healthier choices in their life. They had that capability here in the past. So why this person lowers themselves in order to associate with someone who encourages a manipulative side, they just cheapen themselves. They lessen themselves and they also align themselves with the dark, with ignorance um, and with underhanded ways of behaving. But it's confusing when you look at this person because they don't need to. And I don't know what that says about them. Like um, with pile number one, it's almost like, I mean, they have no other choice. They have no, um, they're very shallow. They're very um, vapid and they don't have a well-developed mind and they don't have a well-developed skill set and they don't feel like that should be the, like that's just the way that they are. But this person is different. This person is different. And you know, the thing with Anakin as well is like uh, Padme. I feel like Padme Amidala, that was like, um, he lost her in some way. And you might be Padme in this, who is beautiful, but talented as hell. Oh my gosh. And this is like the Aquarian energy. This is you, I think, that I'm talking about. And I don't know what position you have in this person's life. Because like I said, this could be a father, this could be a business leader. But in some way, this person was meant to partner with you. And they chose to go down a lesser path. And it's obvious that it was lesser as well. Um, so I don't know why they did that. Must I must be insecurity. I'm still like not getting that. I feel like this person confuses you and they confuse quite a bit of people. Um, this person operates via, uh, via confusion as well. But it's like, why? They don't need to. Um, they're not straight up all the time is what I'm hearing. And um, yeah, so this person was meant to, to partner with Padme, which I feel like is you. And again, she is like very Aquarian, very Aquarian. She's beautiful. She very easily could have been like just joined the elite circle and just milked that to her heart's desire. She could have aligned with powerful people. She could have built a monument to herself. Instead, she was a senator for the Republic. She um, was very intelligent and she she could have just probably skated by on her looks, like, let's be real, but she skated by on her mind. And she was actually a very prominent senator who was able to communicate the needs of the people um, very well. So this person was meant to align with you and then also, like, I don't know, maybe have a home or, like, um, be this, like, father energy, like, backing this. But, yeah, this person is split into they are broken. They're broken. And there is a sense this person is also going through a difficult time. And because they did not lean into the proper parts of themselves, the part of themselves that knows themselves to be capable, the magician can handle anything. The magician has everything that, that's ready to like jump off because they didn't lean into that side of themselves. Because I feel like whatever crossroads that they are faced with now making a decision that probably has to do with the pile number one person of like, well, I've built my image and I've only built myself via image. So um, now that I recognize who this person is absolutely recognizing who the pile number one person is like in their life at this point, whether again, like it's a business partner, whoever. And they're like, well, because I built myself entirely on superficial image, um, and I'm very skillful at that because this person has an intelligence that they are able to use and they have an actual skill set that they're able to use um, here as well. Now, what do I do? Because my image is everything. It doesn't need to be everything, but it is now. And I feel like this is shame. <laughs> Let me, I'm not trying to be harsh. It is shameful that this is tripping this person up at this stage in their journey because had this person become the person that they were meant to be, this wouldn't stop them even for a second. They're showing me like a little teeny tiny pebble that's like in front of this person that they would have just stepped over and like not even really even seen. It wouldn't be a choice. It wouldn't be tripping them up. Um, they would be way bigger than it, right? Um, now it's this huge boulder. It's like they're saying making mountains out of molehills, but this is not just in this person's mind. This person has in their life chosen to make themselves smaller and to therefore make their enemies and things that can trip them up bigger. And I'm also hearing this person has reverted to some kind of childlike state because, okay, so um, maybe this person has become a bit narcissistic. I don't think that this actually, um, like I'm hearing they've become full of themselves. I don't think this person has it this as like a natural kind of a quality to them. I think they've been around the wrong people who are self-absorbed and they encourage this. They've just been around this. There's a marinade effect. And there was always going to be a marinade effect like on this person's li um, life. That they could use for better or for worse. But again, it has to do with a key crossroads and who they chose to partner with um, in some level that would have them in that would this there's like this that's really it like looks like a choice between partners, but it, it really is a choice of like 
who they are and what they want to lean into and what their values are and what they believe in. It's so much more than that. And it was going to put them around energies and talk conversation that was going to have a long term marinating effect on this person. And they've gone this negative way. So they've been around and influenced by narcissists, I think. And they think that that's elevated or they thought that um, that was the way to go. And that's how to build success. This person is an enabler. This person is an enabler. Um, and they, what they do is they dismantle their own intelligence, their own integrity, their own character, their own mind in order to um, do that. I'm hearing this person has been kind of a lapdog um, for some of these people because they are just being used. Okay, first of all, this person, um, you remember the Ken dolls back in the day? Like at least when I was a kid, for whatever reason, like the boy dolls that I had, like their heads would just like come off. <laughs> Um, and like, that's what I'm getting is like, this person's just like their head has been ripped off and it's like, go here, do that. So this person has a type of intelligence. They have a type of skill set, but this, okay. Um, but then they just get pointed in a direction and basically used for other people's ends. They're not making up their own mind. This person's not autonomous. They're not independent. And this is also why the spiritual path, Ramana Maharshi, this is why Ramana Maharshi is the example of the masculine path of the, the strongest strength that a man or a woman, but that masculine side of all of us is able to achieve because self mastery is, will always be the highest expression of power that there really is. This person sought power in a different way. Um, but the problem is, if you don't seek self-mastery, that I am the captain of my ship and I will not lower myself for some kind of quick access to money, resources, what I perceive as power, then what happens is that you can build yourself up in whatever arena of life you want to. You can bodybuild, you can build up your career, you can build up your money, but you're not free. Somebody else has put you there and you didn't make sure that you stood up for yourself and that you're living your life on your own terms and saying no to the where you know to situations where you know that you could be a puppet and i'm seeing that this person understood that because this person's intelligent so this person understood that like they were partnering with people and there was a risk where they would potentially be used as a puppet but then there's something here that like took this person's head clean off and it was maybe this pile number one person who was like very superficial and they were like everything's gonna be fine i mean yeah like we all like could um be each other's puppet but that's never gonna happen to you because i love you or you can trust us stupid like it was just stupid it was like mindless and obviously not true but this person wanted whatever it was it was temptation they got tempted to the dark side and now they're darth vader and i feel like this person can't show their, their face like with the helmet um this person also like got burned i feel like this person has actually been betrayed maybe that's what's actually um causing this where it's like the error of their ways and this person may have also done some shady shit because um you know anakin skywalker you know what his first act was he went to the daycare didn't he and i'm not going to say what he did there um, but it was not civilized, um, or moral. And so I feel like this person has done things that in their right mind, they wouldn't have done, but they, um, what happens? Okay. So this is reminding me of like the Stanley, Stanley, not the Stanley. Okay. The experiments, I think it's Stanley Milgram. Um, the ones where, uh, the people, okay. So the, the, they brought people in to do like these experiments and they had two people. One of them was actually a clinician that was in on it, but the person who was actually like the test subject thought that they were both test subjects. So they put them on like two sides of a machine. So the test subject, the real one, um, was the one administering electric shocks like to the other person. And they were told that, um, okay, I'm gonna tell you when to shock this person and then you do it. And the shocks are gonna get progressively worse and worse and worse. And the, um, the clinician who is pretending to be a test subject says, okay, that's fine. But just so you know, I have a heart condition. And then like they go to the other side. And so then it starts going and they're hearing this person scream. And like, as the, the shocks like ratchet up and up and up, they scream louder and louder. And then they even start saying like, my heart, my heart. What they found is that if the, the act, the clinician that is the clinician and um, is acting like the clinician who's like overseeing the experiment, if they say, I will take all responsibility for this, Okay, because a lot of people would be like, I can't do this anymore. Like he's clearly in pain. And they were like, you don't want to affect the experiment, do you? Okay, yeah. And they're like, okay, but this is on you. And as long as the clinician was like, yeah, it's on me. This is my experiment. I take full responsibility for whatever occurs here. They would still allow themselves to harm another human being to the point of my heart, my heart. Oh my God, I think I'm going to die. And I think the last one was like when they administered the final shock, like they really actually thought the person died or something like that. Like, I mean, this person was like at the end of it, like screaming bloody murder. And it's just an amazing finding that people can inflict such harm, like their own autonomy, like is completely removed from the situation. So this person has been put in a situation. They got themselves in there. Um, I'm just hearing, I just heard the word weasel. They've like weaseled their way 
and they thought this was the pinnacle of success because this person, let me not, they're not stupid. That's why this is damning. This is more damning than the pile. The pile number one person is like, bleh, like, you know, deeply uncomfortable to be around. And a lot of people should probably ostracize this person unless they're doing their work. This person knows better. So the karma is going to be different. This person absolutely knows better. And um, they are, have just been used, I think, to inflict a lot of pain. This could be in a business arena. Their mouth. Like I'm hearing too, like Mercury is a, is a communicator, you know. Um, this person may appear like trustworthy or clean cut or seem to have a position of legitimacy. But it's like I'm hearing we both know how you got here. So like it's just um, bad. They might have partnered with somebody for money. So like in a romantic sense, like they know that they partnered with someone who is vapid, but has like money associated with their name or a family business that they wanted to weasel their way into. Um, yeah, like this person is, um, this is like a soldier that has like really kind of gone wrong here. So now, like I said, I think this person has um, gone into their villain era. So why is this person showing up as your enemy? It's because they're the enemy of the good. And I think you are the good. This is like um, Anakin Skywalker becoming Darth Vader, working against everything that Padme stood for. And so I think in some way it's like this person, they work for the other team. They work for the dark. They work for the shadow. They work for the ignorance. They work for what is not illuminated. And you work for what is illuminated. And I think you are comfy and you are cozy in some kind of like home. You feel like you're surrounded by family. You've managed to weave straw into gold is what I'm hearing. And that was always supposed to be this person's highest and best path too. Like that's what they would have experienced had they partnered with you in some way. Um, had they, they would have, and all of it would have been self-made. This person definitely has the ability to be self-made. Um, and they would have been if they got, if they focused on their skill set, similar to how you met the pile number one person, like in your own energy, like I'm not going to stoop. I'm not going to compete. I'm not going to take the bait. Um, if I am to compete, I want to be chosen for my skill set, for my depth, for my self-awareness. And if this isn't the company that is going to admire those skills, thanks for telling me I got the memo. I'm going to go to a company who actually wants people who are performers and somebody who can actually produce results and like, I want to be valued for that. Even if like on the surface, maybe you look very similar or your mannerisms are very similar. You're like, yeah, I'm social, but I function <laughs> like I'm load bearing, you know, and this person clearly isn't. This person should have been that way with this person. This person should have seen this coming. This person really should not have been attracted to this energy at all if they were the person that they were always meant to be. So now I think this person's deeply disappointed in themselves, but they they're, they've become like this person in that they can't have self-awareness because they would be deeply disappointed with themselves. This person has the ability to process what they've done, the decisions they've made, the people that they've partnered with. They have the ability to do that. They just don't want to because they don't want to burst their own image of themselves as this bullshit father figure who is um, achieved something, achieved. This person is really just smoothed and they didn't have to. Like, that's just, I feel like it's confusing for you to be like, why did you make the decisions that you made? Like, it's, it almost appears worse for this person because they didn't have to. Um, yeah. So this person has kind of become narcissistic in the sense that they are refusing to have depth to them. They're refusing. They can. They definitely can. They've got the mental processing power and everything. A lot of it, too. Um, they just aren't because they would rather make you a villain and they would rather, they've adopted and like are seeking to deploy these um, traits of this pile number one person. So um, where they do everything in the external world and they maybe rush to put out fires and um, they're very impulsive in their actions and they don't take time to actually be more measured and sit in their own energy, make their own decisions. They don't do that. It's not like them though. It's not their natural um, tendency. They've just gotten so used to behaving this way because they thought it was easy. They like not thinking because they thought that they, this person has, um, this is what their karma has to deal with as well, is like this person dismantles their ability. They actively dismantle. They're like, well, I don't need to think about it because I'm making money. I don't need to think about it because I'm doing this and I'm doing that. And if I think about it, then I'm going to potentially not do that. The world sees that this person needs to define success for themselves. They don't have a, like, I think that's also, um, that's 
what this fault line is, is this person needed to define success for themselves. They needed to know what their values are and they need to make their decisions based on their values. That's like, there's an original point here where this person, there was like a fork in the road. And I think there was probably a spiritual test here as well. Like I think spirit um, is trying to protect you or others from this individual. So um, this person and at the heart of it is what does it mean to be successful? Does it mean being vapid and just putting forth like some kind of an image? Does it mean just having money, but no character and no success and nothing that your children can legitimately look up to? Does it mean becoming a snake? Does it mean becoming a weasel? Um, and this person said, yes. <laughs> yes, it does. I've made my decision. I'm going with it. I want what I want, what I want, what I want, what I want. And then they never thought of it again because otherwise they would have a reckoning. This person will have a reckoning. It's going to be imposed. You want, you love the external world so much. You don't want to dip into your internal space. The external world's going to start talking to this person, I think in a big way. Um, this person may put you in a state of anxiety, feeling like you weren't good enough. Look, she's got like a funeral shroud over her head. So you feel like something is done and dusted here with this person. You feel like maybe I'm hearing left for dead. This person could have left you for dead in a bad negative situation. I'm seeing the 10 of swords. So they could have betrayed you. This was a painful ending. Um, that this person either induced was a part of, or because of their absence in your life allowed to occur. This was some kind of karmic debt that they needed to repay because this person is masterful. The reason they are masterful is because they were meant to use that mastery in order to assist their friends in order to make up their karmic debts um and instead this person chose to use it for selfish gain this person's horrible like um at this yeah and they feel impotent so that's what this whole thing is i feel like this person's always kind of had that um it's weird because i feel like i'm hearing this um phrase it's like oh there's something about a college campus the promise of youth the smell of curricula um like at the beginning of this person's life there was a lot of promise it's like mm, the smell of potential you know and they really liked that but and they knew their own potential this is a person who knew that they did have some kind of a, a potential right um Somewhere along the line, though, this person, oh, I can't stand this person. I really can't stand their energy. And, and if you, I don't, obviously this person's your enemy, but I don't think you'd want to be around them because they're just insufferable at this point. They've made themselves annoying is what I'm hearing, like, and shallow and vapid. Why would you choose this? Um, I don't get this because this person has like an Im immense amount of strength. Um, but I think they've become provocative. They've become, they've used their strength to like become the provocateur is what I'm getting. But this person feels impotent. Um, but like with the strength card, they want to um, have uh, the appearance of power, control, leadership, authority. But also usually this card has like the, the f female over it, that Virgo energy. That's what I'm getting with this. There's a, an energy here that presents like it's a uh, maiden or fair or, um, and it actually chokes out this person's strength. Um, this person's like mind controlled, but they choose to be. And then they defend it. This person defends their like horrible decisions. This is this person is like they're not a narcissist, but they're acting like a narcissist. They're using all of their tips and tricks because that's what they've been around. Um, this person's sneaky about like their love affairs or their love situations. This person has underhanded associations. They may have shadow associations that you don't know about. So um, this could be like this person's controlled. This person may have taken money from people that um, now means that they get to control them like a puppet. This person is a puppet. They're a clown is what they are. Um, this person is like, and they don't want to be seen as a clown. So if they like watch this and they would be like, oh, like she's calling me a clown, but then they would seek to destroy me. They'd be like, I'm so big and powerful in my position. I wear my big boy pants every day and I'm going to smush her little sand castle because I can't, she's going to know who she messed with. You know, like that's this person's energy. And it's like, honestly stupid. And like this person sucks. You know what? I'm hearing proletariat. You know what this person was supposed to be? I think this person maybe came from nothing. This person is skillful and talented. They were always meant to be a leader, but they were meant to be an advocate for the proletariat. And like what I just described, like all of us, you know, what I just described is this person wanting to squash other people, people like me, people they should be standing up for. I don't like this person. Um, yeah, and, and they have like underhanded associations. This person definitely like has secret lovers or like secret affairs. Um, but they also have like, I think, secret business dealing. So it's like they appear to work for one cause or for one person, um, but actually they're very underhanded and they're trying, they have a hidden agenda. This person has a hidden agenda. For some of these people, honestly, I'm hearing the word womanizer. Like it just might be their hidden agenda is like they want to appear like great for the ladies. Um, and so they do things to position them like in a certain light, even if it's not best. This person is like full of themselves. 
And they just stream. They, I feel like this person strokes their own ego. But that's how they got involved with the pile number one person because the pile number one person doesn't like them at all. They're like not even sexually attracted to them or anything. They just use them. But they think that they are because they're like, pile number one person likes me and they believe in me. And why wouldn't they? Because I am everything. And I am just so great. This person's blind. Blind as a bat. But they make themselves this way. Um, this person creates uh, situations where they have very difficult decisions to make because they are acting contrary to their character and their values. Um, so they put themselves in these catch-22 positions and they think that um, because, again, they have a mind, okay? It's just not conditioned well. So um, they think, oh, this is just how life is. But it's not like that for people who um, live in a, an upstanding way and have not put themselves in a moral quandary. Like it's the way that this person has gone about it that keeps producing these situations. They also have like certain blocks and this is spirit trying to be like, please don't rack up this horrible karma. And they're like, I'm blowing right past it. And they're like, great. We get to watch, we have to put them through this now. Like not in this life, but in other lifetimes. I really feel like this person, um, okay, yeah, they really are, <laughs> they wanted quick results and they're full of themselves. And I think they partnered with somebody who mirrors that back to them, but they're not getting anything. This person, um, will receive a very small sum of what they thought they were or like what they thought they were going to do because all of this is going to come crashing down. Um, somebody may well like have children with this person and they're going to leave, maybe get into a same sex relationship or like partner with somebody else that's much different than this person. Um, and they might take their children with them, like especially a son, like this person could like up and leave with a son. And now this person like has to give a bunch of child support or something. Somebody here is going to like leave this person sort of high and dry. Um, and then this person's going to look to you. This person's gonna look back to you and be like, that was the love of my life. And you were, and it's too late. And I don't think this person really has, um, they wanna clear the air with you because they view you as the empress, but they view you as being defensive. Um, maybe this person has tried to send you a message or something um, and they see you living your best life and it's making them feel insecure. Um, in reality, this person should have done felt insecure 20 years ago or something, like way back in the day. They should have dealt with this. Um, head on instead of trying to cover it with fineries and position and power. This person has well and truly dug their own grave. It's hard to feel bad for somebody who has so skillfully and at the beginning, very lucidly, you know, and this is very typical of like being tempted down the wrong path where I feel like maybe this person started out like, well, I'm just going to do this for a little bit, you know, and then I'm just going to get what I want from this and then I'm going to leave. And then of course they didn't because they got themselves in too deep. This person, um, for as smart as they are, because it's weird too, because this person has a good heart and the people they associate with definitely don't. This person has no idea who they're dealing with. Okay. They may, they might know, they think these people that they're dealing with are like them in the sense of like, well, we're all just doing this to get by. These people enjoy it. These people enjoy, um, they don't have depth. Like either it's like the pile number one person, they really don't have depth. They're capable of an extreme, their entire existence is a lie. They're capable of an extreme amount of, um, I just heard manipulation, humiliation. Um, they're so selfish and they're so, all they want is riches. And that's their definition of success. It's not a question for this person in this lifetime, like it is for this person of which side you're gonna go down because spirit is like, no, we know for pile number one, we know what their definition of success is. They're not evolved enough to um, have the capacity to consider their own behavior and stuff. This is a very immature, very early soul. They're just, um, they are what they are. This person is much, much different. So they think that people are like them in like, oh, well, we're all just doing this to, you know, because we have to, and because we've all been put in these difficult positions. And this is like very morally troubling for a lot of us, right? At least at the beginning it was. Um, but we all just understand that like, this is the way the world works. And this person is just, they don't know who they're dealing with. They, and they're gonna get taken. This person is um, probably gonna be the fall guy is what I'm hearing. Um, or like, they're just going to get taken for all their worth. I'm hearing like, they've got them by the balls. Even if this is a female, they got them by the balls. And, um, somebody here does, whether it's just one significant other person who has just been using them for their own gain, riding them all the way across the finish line, um, stimulating them. I'm hearing like making them think they're just, it's just a series of like manipulate. This person's entire life has been a lie because the people that they've partnered with are liars and they have no moral, um, like, they have, they have nothing moral about them. And some of these people are sadistic. Like they actually do like taking things from others. They like it. And they're like, to this person, they'll be like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you know, we are all like you. And this person's like, oh, I knew it. I'm going to take you at face value on that because it's not at all ill-advised. And it is. Like, 
it is. This person is willful ignorance. That could sum up this person's entire life. Willful ignorance. And they, which is ironic. This is why this person's impotent because what is a father, right? What is this father archetype of like the emperor? They're competent. They're capable. They're strategic. They're far-seeing. They're multifaceted. Um, and they take responsibility for their decisions. This person wants to play emperor and then not be responsible for the decisions that they've made. And they don't want to have to make decisions in consciousness. They want to be a show pony. They want to be a tool, basically. They want to sit in the chair. That's what I'm hearing. They just want to sit in the chair. And all the while, this person's like in love with you. <laughs> and they're like, um, it's their karma. You are this person's karma because they can't be with you. They can't be, they don't understand that. They think this would impress you. <laughs> I think you'd see this through this in a New York minute. Um, but like, they think that they would impress you. In reality, you are this person's karma. You are this person's Saturn. A, you are this person's long-term commitment. You are this person's long-term success. And partnering with you would have actually resolved their karmas that they came in here. They would have partnered with Padme Abmadala. They would have changed the galaxy together and it would have been cool. Um, but instead, this person's the same as everybody else. They're a tyrant. They're dictator and they want to give off some kind of other image and i think this person similar to pound number one they might be being isolated they might be being called out um who they are behind the scenes is actually being shown and reflected back to them and they don't like that um but you are this person's karma and now this person is feeling what you felt they're feeling um anxious they're feeling look they're feeling left out in the cold they're feeling left for dead they're projecting all of that on and out onto you but who really did it this person really did it because they're the magician and they um uh, they're obsessed with themselves. This person is in love with themselves. So I think they have partnered with somebody who's in love with themselves and neither one of them can see this about each other. Um, if you are thinking like, oh, the, this person and the pile number one person are attractive and I bet like, you know, they don't miss me at all because I bet they're like nighttime sessions, you know, are really good. These are two people who can't see past the nose on their face. They're obsessed with each other. They're really only like thinking about themselves. Like when they're in that act, there's no intimacy. There's no connection. Both of them think the other person should be grateful for like being with them. They're not turned on by the other person. They're turned on by themselves and like who the, who it means that they are. Like this is vapid. This is, and then they want to turn around and act like if this person tries to come back into your life, it's going to be like the page of cups. Like I'm sweet. I'm innocent. I'm that person you've always known. Um, and I'm really sorry. And I'm very creative and I'm very sweet and I'm very fun. Um, but spirit is saying to leave this person out into the cold because this person wants a sanctuary from the bad decisions that they have made. And they're fascinated with you because again, you represent the promise of who they should have been. And I think there's something about you where it's like you are this person's perfect partner in whatever sense. So part of their karma is seeing that in you, seeing like, this is the person that I should have been partnering with. This is like, look at them. Cause you went through that period of hermitude, remember? And now like you're starting to blossom and they're like, this is like actually it. This person's load bearing. This person, like they talk the talk, they walk the walk. I could go far with this person. And spirit's like, you think? Do you think you get it? <laughs> Maybe just a little bit. God, I wish you were smarter. <laughs> like That's like really spirit right now. And um, I also, so this person is seeing in you like the perfect partner, but I also think they're seeing in you the person that they could have been the promise of who they could have been, what it actually looks like to walk the talk and walk the walk. So this person's doing a lot of reflecting. This person's been very manipulative um, and they're reflecting on that, like something here in the past. I think they also could have had a manipulator around them when they were a child um, here as well, but they're getting an entirely different perspective on wealth and um, that's their karma. But this is something that's going to take a long period of time. There's a judgment. So if this person has a company or anything that this person, whatever it is that this person wanted, the, the very... <laughs> The small, this is what Spirit's saying. The small hill that this person has sold their soul for, sacrificed their soul, their goodness, their genuineness, their authenticity. The small hill that they wanted to sit atop in the grand scheme of things. For some of them, it's not such a small hill. But whatever hill this person has sacrificed everything holy um, to sit atop, that is under judgment. So some of these people could be being like audited. Somebody's got their eyes on this. Um, they're seeing like these back, look, backdoor dealings. They're sealing this like backdoor dealings. Remember I said like there's like underhanded partnerships, even if it seems like everything is above board. I'm telling you, there is something here that is hidden about who this person has partnered with, who they have slept with, who they have gotten money from, um, other people's money. There's definitely other people's money here. I actually think it comes from women, um, who are moneyed or something like that, that this person may have had like past sexual situations with. Um, some of these people could have hidden women, hidden children. They could have been trying to pay um their child support from a business account so that their partner didn't actually like find out i mean this is like 
days of our lives up in here, okay? And this person is in their head about this. Like, what is going to come out about them? Because um, this person's been a devil. This person has always taken the shortcut. They've never taken the high road a day in their life. Like, after they... um. They did this. They want to seem like they take the high road because they can finesse people that way. This person likes to be seen like they, they, they don't want to be seen for who they actually are, which is this. Um, this person covets a lot of things and they try to keep people in the dark. This person also is really good at making people think that it's their fault, um, that this person behaves like, like I'm saying, like, I don't think this person started off as a narcissist. This is somebody who has like induced narcissism in themselves, like over time because of who they surrounded themselves with in order to get to the top. This person is horrid. Um, and it's all going to come out. Like, just know that it is all going to come out. There's really nothing that this person can do because the divine is involved here. Um, and I think somebody is seeing an opportunity in this person to squeeze them for something, to be potentially sexually strategic um, in order to, like, I don't know, have a kid steal their money. There's something here that's, like, divinely sanctioned where this person's going to ha um, have built something and then they're going to have to start, like, completely over and they're going to have to find their balance in whatever this is. They're going to have to admit that they've been a fool and that they um, are at some kind of a new beginning. All of this could happen, like, actually very... Um, Suddenly, I think somebody here presented like they were temperance. So this person in the past is like they had a really difficult time and they felt like they weren't getting the respect that they deserved. And they weren't. Spirit is saying that's true. That was meant to motivate them to um, take the path of light towards um, getting this um, over with. So whoever this was presented like they were temperance. I think whoever this was presented like they were also having um, gone through a very difficult time and um, like a divorce or something like that and that they were actually like further along in their healing journey, that they were balanced, um, that they were temperance, that they were like elegant, that they were working on getting their life back together, that they were doing things above board. They presented that way. But this person's gonna have to realize that they were they were a, a fool. That's where they line up. This person was a fool to trust a fool. That whoever this was that was presenting like they were um, um, temperance is actually very um, foolish. They're very young. They're very um, asleep at the wheel. Some This person was asleep at the wheel. They were asleep at the wheel. I mean, because I, I feel like this is obvious. This If you saw this, like this person, this situation, you would have very easily been like, this person is a charlatan. This is an under, this is not a good situation. You're clearly desperate in some like for recognition or for status. You're clearly desperate. It's clouding your judgment. You are making bad decisions. You have low self-esteem and you need to overcome your lower natures. That's if they took the path with you, they would have had a solid partner. Somebody could reflect back the truth. But instead, this person just wanted to live, <laughs> look, the truth, ace of swords. Instead, this person wanted to live a lie and they were just like, look, this person looks pretty pleased with themselves. For some of them, it's like they wanted to have a kid with somebody here or like it's, it could involve a child I'm getting um, and some kind of competition and they were like they thought that they had something that would like just boost them over the competition this person they're the page of swords like the page of swords is like usually being confused but they're not even looking at the truth they're not even looking at the swords they're, they're this person bought all the dreams somebody here tried to sell this person pie in the sky kinds of dreams and instead of looking at the truth of the situation and the truth of who they were because this person was a page of swords and that's okay but you if you're going to actually make something of yourself you need to be honest with yourself about who you are and where you are a page of swords need to educate themselves they, this person knew their potential and instead of tending that potential which they could have well done they took some kind of devil energy some kind of shortcut and they didn't they knew that they were the page of swords but they also felt like they were more deserving of respect and they didn't want to go about that in a legitimate way so instead somebody here just told this person pie in the sky like and we're going to rule the world and this person's so like small and they're so um they believed them this person bought it hook line and sinker where i think if you were at that same conversation you would have been like are you actually buying this like we're you need to switch the water <laughs> like um, you know, it's like, it is that obvious, like whatever this is, I feel like that's why spirit, I'm just hearing shame, shame. Like, and I think this person is just like seeing the unbelievable shallowness and they were very impulsive. It was obvious that it was a setup. I'm hearing it was obvious that it was a setup. Um, could have been using partying, um, sex, anything to like, and this person was like, my dream come true idiot <laughs> this person's been an absolute idiot so um things have actually ended here between the two of you you are going to get the respect that you deserve here in this person's eyes spirit is going to make sure of it you are encouraged even though there's probably emotions here you're being encouraged to walk away from this you have the higher perspective spirit might even be ordaining you here in something because again you've done the work 
So now it is actually your time to shine and everything you build, baby, is sticking with you because you've gone about the right road. You've actually built yourself the way that you need to. This person's going to be heartbroken. They might even feel betrayed. In reality, you did not betray this person. If you aligned with this person under their terms, like it would have been a betrayal to you. I think this person actually did betray you. There could have been a third party that this person should not have involved with. That's what I'm hearing. There's a third person where there is no excuse. There is none under the sun that spirit will ever accept why this person should have entered into some kind of a contract here with this third party. It should have never been. And now I'm hearing the song, um, You Can Never Be. It's like a really sad song. It's like, and you will never be. So I think you, this person in your eyes, I think held a lot of promise. You saw the potential in them, but you recognized that it was potential and it didn't shy. You weren't like, I expect you to be fully formed. You were like, we could grow together. I'm actually on a learning path myself. I have a long ways to go. Like, do you want to split the rent and, you know, have dinners together and go to like the fall festival and have a dog and like build our life together. And like, we can just make sure that we're happy and that we're sticking to our values and we live life on our own terms. That was all on offer with you in some way, regardless of like your position, like we can actually do it. We can actually be the people we want to be. And this person was like, nope, <laughs> I want to be a fucktard. <laughs> and you were like, okay. Um, so this person in reality broke your heart, betrayed you by entering into some kind of association with a third party that not for a single day, not for a single liaison, not for a single midnight kiss, not for a single moment in time, should this person have ever for a moment even considered, let alone done. And if this person was at all connected with themselves, it would have never happened. And that's your karmic justice, is me explaining that, that that spirit's point of view should have never happened. So this person can run their mouth all they want. They are immoral. I'm hearing this person has behaved in an incredibly immoral way. And now this person covets you. They covet what you have. And they covet you as a person, but like what they really want is like your perspective that they would have gained for themselves. You can't gift someone perspective on everything. You can kind of point to it, but this is like a perspective. This person needed to walk a particular path. And I'm literally hearing like, no, like they're too good. Like, I feel like a carriage pulled up, like you were walking and I feel like a carriage pulled up that was like gold or whatever. And you were like, you're not really gonna side with those awful people, right? Like. And this person is like, I mean, there's a pebble in my shoe and then like gets in there and you're like, you are a man in your prime. Like, why do you need to be carried by the carriage? Like, you've got this next three miles in you. I don't understand. Like, there's something about this. And this person just defends it. They just defend their bullshit. So this person is like full of nonsense. You can't even get through to this person, even though they and it might frustrate you because it's like, you know, they have the capacity to understand your side, but they just refuse. This is willful ignorance. I'm going to keep saying that. You should just refer to this person as willful ignorance in your mind. <laughs> that's what they are. Yeah, this person's corrupt. That's what it is. And they see you. They can't. This person is just, they're just not the person they could have been with you. Um, I think the person that you have in your mind, like maybe this person is your dad. They're just, they're just not um, who you want them to be. And they see you healing. They see you at a distance to them. They see you again, like having these Aquarian values, which this person absolutely does not have. Um, and they're observing you, but this person, because of who they are and because of how they've stunted their own mind, they're showing me like foot binding, but over a person's mind. This person has foot bound their own mind um, because you know, like back in the day, they used to think that was cute. And like um, females were supposed to be um, cute or like, dis you know, like, I don't know, whatever, whatever. They need to have small feet. Um, there's something with the mind. So like there's something about this person, whatever gender they are, they're expected to be a type of way. So they bound their mind to try to fit a certain mold instead of allowing the mind to be whole and allowing the mind to grow out and to express again, their own Aquarian values. I actually think this person's very Aquarian. I think that's where you actually connect is that both of you have like a freak flag. You don't exactly fit the mold and you viewed that as your strength and leaned into it. And this person um, was like, but if I bind my mind, um, I'll fit in over here. And that's, that's what they did. Um, and then this person, they got taken in by very cold, very corrupt, very manipulative people who do not care for this person. I think this person thinks that they're a part of a family. Um, like even if this is a work environment or something, they're like, these are my family. It kind of reminds me of like, um, if the scene in Rapunzel, you know, where they go into that bar and every, like she gets like really scared. If that was actually like what it is, you know, they're all like very sweet. But if it was actually like, you know, people who had like a hook for hand and like stolen stuff, like 
that's that's where this person's around. None of these people have emotions for this person. They will all stab them in the back if they don't play ball. Even the people that are closest to this person, nothing is real in this person's mind, but they think that it is. All this person I think ever wanted was a family and then they wanted to be the lead of that family, legitimately. But they've just um, gotten themselves involved with very opportunistic, cold, cold. Even if this, if this person's in a relationship, that person, I'm telling you, it's creepy to me. They have no emotions for this person, none. They saw them as a bag. They saw them as a paycheck. They saw them as an opportunity. But you know what? This person saw them the same way. So that's this lower vibrational thing that they meet on. And they both now, I think I'm getting these people at odds with each other. They're like pointing the finger at one another and they're like, cause you are shallow and you were just view viewing me as a bag. You never liked me. That's why you've been having all these affairs on me. Or like, that's why you always throw me under the bus. And then this person's like, um, no, you, how about you? You, you saw the same thing in me and they're both right. <laughs> So this person sucks and they're being put, this person has had a major ending or they will have. I kind of feel like it's slow and painful though. This person's being investigated. I think potentially like there could be there, like, like I said, somebody's coming out here that this person was trying to keep buried and they thought by associating with these people <laughs> that none of them have any genuine loyalty to one another and they're all out for their own self. These are people who couldn't be a part of a team. Like they just don't have the skills. Um, and uh, yeah, so this person is going to have to do what you did when they left you hanging in some on some level and find their temperance um at the end of this situation and they have to start over and they have to start over from scratch um none of this is going to be able to like go to this person in the future and what's really sad is this person was meant to help you um in order to clear their own karma with you and many others because i feel like you were the gateway to actually leading this person to becoming the person they were going to be building up some kind of skill set and then this person was going to then be funneled into a group of people that, again, there's this marinating effect and the conversations are positive and uplifting and definitely not narcissistic like they are over here. And also this person has um, to repay their karmic debt to you. This is something over the long haul through partnership and being a genuine friend and partner to you and being upfront, being who they say that they want to be, overcoming their shadow side. That's how this person uh clears that up. But then there's other people here that would be your children. If this is a romantic, um, it's that third house energy. Um, their children, potentially your siblings, um, their siblings, um, and like people that they see on a day-to-day -day basis, the people that they surround themselves with and people that potentially like they share skill sets with, or, um, they have some kind of commerce with this person has a lot of karmic debt to repay. And they really had a solid shot at it with you, I'm hearing. But I think you're leaving this person behind and I think it's divinely sanctioned. You are setting yourself free from this energy. You are partnering with your own, like whoever this person was supposed to be to you, whether it's like a boss or a business partner or a romantic partner, you are actually partnering with somebody who is what this person um, needed to be. And somebody who for their own happiness requires an empress. They, re they couldn't for a day, for a moment, be around the energies that this person has surrounded themselves by, it would not be satisfying to them. They need somebody who is genuine and who is real and who is authentic. You are actually um, either with this person or you are calling this person into your life. Um, so we'll get some, um, we will get some, don't fall for the angel act with this person. They learned that from this corrupt person that they um, have been around, that if they play angel, that this part is beneath them in every way is what I'm hearing. This person just needs to be like, I'm a piece of shit. <laughs> like, I know it, you know it, let's not beat around the bush. This person is called to a masculine path regardless of their gender. Masculine is straight up. It's I said I'm this and I'm that. You're not gonna dig around and find a bunch of like hidden weird things. But this person's shadow side very much is sneaky and this person has a corrupted uh feminine energy they have a corrupted feminine energy within themselves that they've the this is the energy that they've now surrounded themselves with and they don't all have to be females these are people who go after again like the corrupted side of feminine things like venus which is the corrupted side of partnership the corrupted side of contracts the corrupted side of luxury and um society and things like that they, they they go after it so they fed their own dark side basically and um they have learned this corrupted angel behavior from i think a partner to be honest with you i think this is like uh they fall for this act repeatedly with this um partner and they were they thought to themselves oh, that's really powerful they lure me in with this angel act and then they turn on me and they get exactly what they want out of me. So I'm going to do that. Like that's kind of what this person has realized and other people around them do it too. But I think they learned it from watching like it could have even been a child for some of these people. I don't know. Ugh. 
I feel like this would be a grown child though. Like this person has watched that they put on this angel act and they know it's an act. But then they, instead of being like, instead of calling somebody out and being like, stop it, that's gross. I don't want to be around this anymore. They're like, I should do it too. Like that's, that's who this person is. And it might surprise you. They might also like to play the victim, but this person victimizes. This is victim, rescuer, persecutor dynamics, playing the victim for positive feedback. I think this person knows that they have partnered with people who are like in their soul, more corrupt than they are. In reality, this person is just quickly catching up. But I think they know that you can recognize that some of the people they've partnered with, they see this in you, that you see the corrupted side of these people more quickly. So they may try to be like, yeah, you know, I've been victimized by these people. I was victimized by these people too. And they were, but they were mostly a victim of their own self and lack of righteousness. <sighs> yeah. <clears throat> Slave. This person is a slave. They've made themselves a slave. I'm hearing they're like indebted to people. That's, they didn't have to be, but they are. And they've given their willpower. That's what I was describing with the Stanley Milgram experiment. Um, they give their willpower over, over to an external authority out of fear of making your own choices. That's like the weird thing about this person I think you need to see is they want to act like they're the emperor and they're the one in charge. But then the second that things go wrong, because they're not actually in charge, they know it. They're not actually the ones making the decisions. They just want to be seen that way. So the second that anything goes wrong, not like an emperor being like, yeah, I made that decision because they did and they stand by it and they know exactly why they made that decision because they're qualified to make it. Instead of that, this person wants to point fingers and be like, I'm just a slave to their them and like everything that they wanted me to do. I, um, cause, cause they give over their authority as, as soon as things go wrong, they prove the fact that they're not an emperor. And this would surprise you. Like if you were in a relationship with this person, as soon as things go wrong, you think that you've gotten in yourself in a relationship with an emperor, somebody who's capable, competent, and you want an emperor to be an emperor when shit hits the fan. This person won't be, they all of a sudden they're helpless and they don't know how you got here. And you're like, wait, but but you can help. Okay, sure. But like, let's figure this out. No, this person's incapable. Um, no accountability. And this person, the really fucked up thing about this person is they give a different impression. They give a different impression. Don Juan. I'm telling you something about sex here that has been used to forge contracts and keep people quiet, um, to get certain people money, to maneuver, like to move, uh, yeah, to maneuver other things. This person may be a Don Juan. They may try to use the power of romantic attraction for private agendas. This person might be quite charming. If they notice that somebody has an attraction to them, they'll try to milk it for all it's worth. This has also been done to them though. This has also been done to them. Very shallow people, very shallow people. Look, Don Juan again and then Monk Nun. I feel like this is like the difference here. This person, this is like their light and shadow side. And I feel like you have selfish devotion, single-minded dedication to spirit. That's that Hierophant energy. This person was meant, like that was supposed to be this person's guiding light of like, no, I'm a person of character. I set my values and I go there. But instead, this person is like in this Don Juan energy. They use it and they've been taken in by it. I'm hearing he who lives by the sword dies by the sword. They try to act like they're a Samaritan too, like that they've, but all of this is for their own personal gain. It's laughable that this person thinks that people buy their bullshit, that they are um, a good Samaritan. It's laughable. Spirit is saying it's honestly laughable and it really will be laughable when all this person's dirty laundry gets like exposed because it will. Tell me about that. This person's a vampire. What the heck? Like this person, I don't think you know to the extent how bad this person is. Because you knew that they, I think you're meant to like let go of the promise that this person had. This person has fully given into the dark side. Um, that's why they're your enemy. Vampire. They have vampires all around them, but this person has been a vampire as well. I wouldn't enter in, into any deals with this person. They're incapable of negotiating without um, doing like negotiating with uh, an ulterior motive. This person is horrible. Visionary. Selling insights to the highest bidder, compromising your vision to make it more acceptable. That's all this person has done. I think I'm getting ready to wrap this up because I feel like we've kind of learned. It's, you know what it is? It's like surprising. And I feel like, oh my gosh, like what else are we going to um, uncover here? But I think like visionary, I think this is you. Um, obviously you're using spirit here, like in the tarot to understand and to, um, even if like, Maybe through tarot or like your own intuition or some like through this visionary energy, you have come to see this person who they really are. Or like you're like using the tarot to 
back up what it is that you thought you were picking up on. This person is a wounded child, you know, but Anakin Skywalker, they've like full blown gone to the dark side. And I think they've harmed other wounded children that they were supposed to like be holding hands with and helping. Um, but they have a fear of facing their own demons. And I think you have been freeing yourself and others from destructive impulses. This person has just been pretending to want to do that, but um, bringing people into dirty deals. This is like kind of mafia roles is what I'm getting, where it's like this person pretends they lead. I'm hearing econ uh, Confessions of an Economic Hitman by um, John Perkins, but he came to the light and... You know, like, because he loves tribal cultures. Like, if you don't know who John Perkins is, and he spent a lot of time in them, but then he was used to, he was sent in um, in order to, like, form financial deals that were shady. And they all, they seemed good on the surface. They seemed like they were good Samaritan deals. They seemed like um, they were, yeah, like, we're going to put in new roads and new hospitals and stuff. But really, they were bad loans that were meant to, like, make people indebted. There's something about this person. I think they operate this way in their personal life because they've learned to. Um, they may do this in business as well. So, unfortunately, that's what I have for you guys. Pile number two. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. I must look him up. Meant to bind. Yeah, this is devil energy, which is meant to construct and, or, um, I feel like this person may have certain things about their personality that people are like, I can weaponize that. And this person's like, I'll let you. I'll totally let you. <sighs> oh, man. All right. Okay, my water is down here. I, that gave me a headache. I feel like this person is a headache. They're a headache because... You, a lot of people see this too late. I feel like you were protected from this person because you did represent a different path. So, and you are this person's karma for pile number two. You definitely are. Um, wow. Okay. I need to just take a second to get off of that. Um, all of this type of info is critical for our up-leveling as a society. I agree. I agree. You know, the word apocalypse means uncovering. Like, so, um, and like, I always think about revelation in the Bible, like a revelation, things are being revealed. I really think that's what's going on around us. It reminds me of that Jesus quote that is like, when everything starts to turn and ev the world starts to be in upheaval, these things have to come to pass. But whenever that starts happening, look up to the sky for your release is near. Like that fa that fancy Jesus quote. That's like really what I feel like is happening like to these people. Um, and I'm also hearing like what has happened in darkness will be brought to the light. I think this person will actually be quite embarrassed. I'm hearing like the emperor's new clothes for pile number two. They feel naked and they feel revealed. But you know what? It's the masculine path to be what you say you are. And this person isn't. But they want masculine fruits. They want to be seen in a masculine way. And they're just not. And I do just want to say if this is a romantic um, situation, that would affect things in the bedroom when you find out this person is not masculine. Because I think you're attracted to masculine energy. Um, and then, in fact, it's a corrupt feminine energy within them that tries to masquerade as a masculine energy in order to, I'm hearing the word like pimp out, whatever it is that they want. Oh, okay. Mm. I'm just, I'm, the spirit is like, this person's a worm. I feel like this person, like in pile number two, I feel like this person's guides are like really deeply, like it didn't have, like they're deeply displeased. I'll just say this and then we'll move on to pile number three because what I'm getting is that, you know, this person had a choice to make, okay? They were like bumped right up against the light. They could have gone either way. It's one thing for this person to go dark it's another thing for this person to be like so dark that now they like this repeating this lifetime is like not really even an option for this person. Now they've dug themselves into an even bigger hole. It's not even the same landscape. This person's not even in the same sphere like as they started out on. This person has way made their situation worse on a spiritual level and their guides have been trying to put blocks up. You saw the two of swords. They were trying to be like, please don't do this. This, they gave this person every help, every chance in order to like keep them from doing that. But this person just blew past everything and just like continued to do it. That is like a complete other level of failure. 
And the word failure is apt here. Um, and this is not a person who like fails forward, learns from their mistakes, um, readdresses, because there's, again, there's no self-awareness. There's the capacity for self-awareness. Yeah. So this person's guides are just like, we can't even with this person. They're a worm. They're treacherous. They're nasty. They're slimy. You shouldn't get involved with them. Like, it's just, we can't even in good conscience, like put certain people into this person's past or path like we were doing in the past because they just harm them. They just harm them. Like we have to isolate this person. Yeah. So this person's being isolated, but for a different reason, because this person's dangerous. Um, they'll try to flip them to the dark side. Ugh. Okay. Pile number three. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, okay, pile number three also might be like an overlapping energy that again, this gross like pile number one and pile number two energies like have in common. But also for some of you, this could be like an entirely different kind of a situation. Um, this, your enemy, this person here, right, is very clearly in a desert. Now, you know what lives in a desert, Rahu? And um, so how do I describe this? I know a lot of you already know this, like Rahu is the North Node and the North Node is a part of a system, like with the South Node, they form a continuous system. But in mythology and in our charts, it's been like snapped in two. And so um, Rahu is the energy that in our lives, like it kind of represents our destiny and who it is that we're supposed to become. And we're supposed to like move towards that Rahu energy. And, but you can't just only go after Rahu, like, in and of itself. You have to come up through the South Node energy, up through who you are, up through your values, up through your past lives and your skill sets. And from there, like make contact with your Rahu in order to keep you sane and level and grounded. And so you don't get taken in by like more of the negative qualities of Rahu, which is like ambition. Um, Rahu kind of rules over society and like cityscapes, but again, it like lives in a desert. Um, because if it's not connected to the south node, then it is a head without a body. So it can just eat and eat and eat and eat and eat and nothing is ever, ever enough. So it's like greed and ambition. And I feel like this person, this is a masculine hand that is like um, under the sand and they're like reaching out for help. So this person, it's making very clear to me that this person has taken action to put themselves into like the sand, like into the desert where they're alone. Cause we've mentioned this in both groups now. They're alone, they've been isolated because they're not making proper contact with their Rahu. That's what this like first group and the second group is. That is the spiritual charges kind of like posited. I think they went after their Rahu, but they did it in an unconscious manner that is now under judgment. This person, um, your enemy, is under this like karmic judgment. They have taken active actions. They've made choices to put themselves in the position where they are. None of these people are taking responsibility. Um, and also like with the sand. Now sand is like an energy where like it can slough off like dead skin. So there's something here about this where this person is meant to be like polished by this experience. And I feel like they're being surrounded by this and it's very uncomfortable um, for this person. And they're reaching out for some kind of help. But it's also showing me that this person, like I'm just seeing, like this person's trying to like lure you or somebody else, okay? Because this is what like, you know, what is your enemy up to? Um, this person is trying to petition for help. And it feels like from some kind of an authority actually here, like I don't know who this is. I'm hearing Lilith um, because it's like this dark moon kind of an energy. So it could be somebody that they had an affair with. Um, that's possible. Um, but this like, it could even be somebody that they had a falling out with earlier in their life. Could even be a mother energy. Somebody that they um, tried to paint as a villain. Maybe this is you for some of you. They try to paint this person as a villain. And they maybe try to like outcast this person or something. And now this person is like, whether this is you or somebody else, they're trying to like petition this person for help. But in reality, this person is coming under divine judgment for maybe even for treating whoever this is like very badly. I do feel like there's some kind of an authority here. It feels like a spiritual authority because it's like up in the sky and it does feel like some kind of like feminine goddess divine energy that is like pissed basically. Because remember I was saying like there's a corrupted, I think there's like a, there's a corrupted feminine energy here with your enemies. Um, but I think it tries to pass itself off as other things. So it's this goddess force energy that is really not pleased that her energy and her people, the people who 
have a healthy expression of like feminine energy and goddess divine energy have been harmed by this. I'm hearing Hecate here as well, again, who like rules over witches. So um, there is a trial going on. I'm hearing like trial by fire. So some of these people could be like wrapped up in legal battles and the details are catching up with them. This person, I think whoever your enemy is, thought that they could hide under the details or like if they were, if they just threw out a lot of details or something that it would confuse people and that they wouldn't be able to kind of like piece everything like back together to like uncover the fact that this person is like responsible. That is in no way, shape or form gonna happen because I feel like whoever this is can just lift this person like up out and just be like easily see like whatever has gone on here. This person's Delulu. Um, and like, you know, I'm just picturing somebody like parched in the desert and they're like seeing certain mirages. I feel like this person, your enemy could even be being tormented at night. This could be with the thought of you or um, mirages, like their fears. So it could be like they're having nightmares or they're thinking up like worst case scenarios. Um, this person, okay, I'm also hearing uh, Taylor Swift where, she's, where she says, um, and all the people that I ghosted stand there in the room. This person has treated people badly and I think they don't know if some of these people are going to be coming back for their karmic retribution and some of these people will actually be coming back. If some of these people that they've done dirty are passed on, I think that they may be like haunting this person in some way, shape or form or put like, they're a part of giving this person their karma where it's like the types of things that this person is like having their fears over centers around whatever karmic lesson that they need to learn, like that why they treated this person badly. I think this person is like, they're too focused on selfishness and like, oh my gosh, like what's going to happen to me to be able to be productive in their self-awareness. So for some of you, I think they could literally be going through like legal battles. And again, like they could be having people like look through certain things and they need to be like, okay, this is like not for everybody, right? This is like for very specific circumstances. They need to be like convicted and do some time for some of these people in order to ev like even be able to begin the process of thinking about what it is that they've done and like becoming self-aware. Again, this person like kind of needs to be put into that because until they get to that place, they're really only focused on themselves. They're really only caring about themselves and proving themselves innocent. This person is not innocent. They don't care that they're not innocent. They're focused on how they can portray um, innocence and they're focused on trying to petition. This person seems like they, they're they trying to petition help from somewhere um, in order to and I'm picturing Morticia Adams. So again, like I've, I've seen her energy like come through, um, but it's like this Lilith kind of energy too of like, they're trying to petition somebody here who is feminine, but it's not the type of feminine this person's used to dealing with. Um, or they're seeing the other side of some feminine that they thought was a different way, but um, is actually like very pleased. Cause like I, like I was saying, I think for some of you, these people are like fall people. They're like getting, they're the fall guy or the fall girl. And um they, this person is like, <laughs> be smarter. Like, you know, this person's like, like hell, I'm digging you out of this. I put you in that hole. Like, you know, so for some of these people, it's like they're trying to petition um, or they're trying to petition somebody that, like I said, they've done dirty in the past and they tried to paint as a villain and actually isn't a villain. And they're like, wait, 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 wait. Like I got victimized too, like by this person, you know, and I, and I hope you can forgive me. I just didn't really see what I was involved with. And you're like, well, that sucks for you. But like, you actually need to, Learn your lesson. Um, there's something here about glass as well. I don't know if some of these people could have cut their hand on some kind of glass, um, but I'm also seeing like, um, okay, I'm hearing black mirror. I think this person feels like they're living in a black mirror episode, um, but like, you know, like with their, their phone or something. So they could be on their phone. And like, I think this spirit's been trying to give this person some kind of message. So they'll type out some kind of message that's heinous and shows like who, who it is that they really are. And then the phone will turn off and like the black mirror reflects their face back to them. And it's like, they're seeing their reflection in like the darkness. And it's like, who are you? Like spirit is really trying to say like, you need to put your focus on you. The damage is done. I'm hearing the damage is done. So I guess I'll be leaving. This person's trying to like up and leave and be like, well, sorry. <laughs> um, like jump out before like they receive any consequence. So this person is daft <laughs> like in some way. Um, what, th what I feel like this person is trying to do though is they're, I'm hearing old habits die hard. So I feel like this person's actually trying to lure someone out here and I'm just picturing it as like quicksand because you can't see that it's quicksand here. So this person, in order to help this person, I think somebody would have to implicate themselves and this person knows it, but um, like it wouldn't be the best move for like whoever this is and whoever this is, like somebody here is like above this and they're seeing things very clearly. And I, what I think this person, they're just not accepting that they're caught. 
Like, I feel like this person is just not accepting that they are caught red handed is what I'm hearing. Red handed. Um, and yeah, there could be something with like, again, a skill or some kind of communication or a gesture or I don't know. Um, there is like, spiritually speaking, there's been a final judgment here in this situation. And whatever occurs here on the physical is just an outgrowth of what's already been. I'm hearing this person's already been condemned on a spiritual level. Like they've had a trial. They've, their guides have been talking. They were trying to help this person. They refused to play ball. They refused to come to terms with themselves. And this is what has been happening. Now I'm kind of seeing the king of wands. Um, cause like the king of wands, like also lives in a desert. This person, um, I don't know, maybe a king of wands type, this enemy that could have been a womanizer. It's like, yeah, I'm kind of getting, okay. This person's having an ext uh, extreme reversal in fortune, but it hasn't happened yet. It's in the process of happening. And this person can kind of sense that. And they're trying to like appeal to certain friends. Um, they're trying to like rally the troops. They're trying to like solidify their position, but there's just no doing it. There's just no doing it because people know that this person's like radioactive. I feel like if people do reach out a, a helping hand, they impl they implicate themselves or they um, it wouldn't be good for them. So this person is definitely facing an extreme reversal of fortune and it can't be reversed like whatever this judgment is. And again, it's meant to put themselves in genuine temperance energy. In one of the piles before, I don't remember which one it is. I was like, somebody's trying to fake temperance energy. Now they're going to have to actually do it. Um yeah. And this person, I think, was in a position of respect. And now they're going to, they were actually, um, this person's ego told them that they deserve more respect. But this person deserves a lot less respect. And they're going to get that um, a lot less respect because they're corrupt on the inside. And um, this person may actually have to do like, like labor or work that they are not appreciated for, or um, like, they feel like they're doing an unfair amount of work or something like that, or it's like menial jobs. Like this person may actually have to um, do something here like that. Um, there's something about an elder sister. Maybe this person's trying to appeal to an elder sister. There's somebody here that has that elder sister kind of an energy that they should have respected and they're trying to like reach out. Or maybe this person's trying to like act like the elder sister. I don't know. Um, this person thought they had a plan. They thought they had it like all planned out. I'm hearing the best laid plans of mice and men. That's how you know there's a spiritual judgment here is because something came in. Like I'm picturing a tower moment here and like busted up this um, this person. Like busted up whatever it was that they thought that they were going to build. Um, and this person is just honestly like wretched. I'm picturing this person like, yes, they're in the desert, but I'm picturing them like in the womb. That's what I'm saying. It's like some kind of feminine energy here, like big feminine energy stream that is like, like holding this person in and they're about to get like pushed through the birth canal here but they're gonna come out like very reduced i'm gonna pull some more cards here for this look the king of wands oh my gosh the king of wands at the bottom of the deck in the, in the hermit oh my gosh so poetic spirit has tried to give this person the higher cup more times than it can count um and I feel like this person has like received some kind of message or they've been like divinely messaged or they're about to get a message. But I think this person kind of knows that it's coming, but they don't know when it's coming and it's still going to kind of catch them off guard whenever it comes in. Um, <laughs> yeah, like, um, and they're going to feel, somebody here I think maybe did betray this person, backstab them. Somebody here could have grown a heart and realized that something here that they were doing is wrong and they they sent a message here um, to alert somebody that this person is like not all they're cracked up to be. And then somebody here started an investigation here. They could have even, um, if this person's like married, they could have uh, told an empress um, here about this. And I just feel like this person has to head, hang their head in shame because stuff is coming out here about this person. They feel like they have a decision in this situation, but they don't. The time for decision-making is past. Um, Spirit, what do you want to say here about this person's enemy? I feel like this person loves you. <laughs> Why are they your enemy? Because they were sneaky. This person was sneaking around. Okay. And like, they love you. I don't know what it is with this group. Okay. You guys must be really good people because in all three piles, I've sensed that your enemy loves you. I think you've handled yourself in a way that is very um, healthy, very above board. Um, and they wish they could be more like you, but this person is like, they're at a distance from you and they're... <laughs> You know, like the seven of swords, it's like, okay, so uh, when I learned about this card, sorry if you can hear my stomach growling, I'm going to get Chipotle after this, you guys already know. Um, 
this person okay so seven of swords when i learned it it's like okay it's two armies and they're gonna like do a fight like in the next day but this one guy like just can't wait till tomorrow and he's like you know what i'm gonna do i'm gonna sneak in and i'm gonna steal as many swords as i can grab and it's like for what purpose like it's not really gonna do anything five swords is not gonna make the difference in the battle and you're risking a lot and it just doesn't make any sense but like i feel like this person thinks that they're cool so i feel like this person again was sneaking around maybe this person i think you are like an empath um maybe there's something about you that is like more um calm um i'm hearing or like yeah they could have known that you are a loving person maybe they even knew that you had love for them and they were waiting for their ships to come in with you is what i'm hearing like this person um, but then they were trying to scheme around in the meantime or something. It's like this person wanted to come back and like retrieve their love for you. I kind of feel like this enemy could have watched you like for a long time, um, like waiting to start some kind of a new beginning, but they couldn't ever really figure out a plan. But then that's when this like judgment energy kind of passed and the truth came out like about their success or about the path forward and maybe about your success here as well. So I think for some of these enemies, they have to watch you succeed or they have to watch you like get married to someone um, to grow in your success while this person is like floundering so that they need to get a different perspective. And what is that? The temperance. I mean, you can't make this up. Like this person needs to get tempered. They need, um, I feel like Archangel Michael could be involved in this, which again tells me there's some kind of danger. You could have been in some kind of danger here, like with this person, or if they were allowed to send the message that they wanted to send. I feel like spirit is protecting you and other people from this person. That's why they're in the desert. I mean, some of these people, it's like they could be um, actively restricted in some way from like communicating. Okay, the, the empress came out in reverse in the sun. Some of you may have children here with this person. It's coming out though about an empress in reverse, either that they were associated with or that they were that. They were pretending like they were the hostess with the mostest, but really this person just like really doesn't have it. Tell me more about this person here. They could have strong Pisces or Sagittarius in their chart, whoever this is. Yeah, they wanted to send a message, but something stopped this person from sending you a message at a particular time. Um, what did they, what did, this person wants to say something to you. They want to apologize, okay? But I wouldn't trust this person's apology. This person seems to know that they hurt you in the past. They know you're a real one. They know that you have a heart and they might have known that you had some kind of love for them because this could be a family member. This could have been a love interest. This, they recognize that and they were always like, okay, I'm going to put that there for later and I'm coming back. Um, and then, and it confused you. This person wanted to come back as something spectacular in your life, but really they just came back like decrepit. Yeah, because this person needs to be in a position of hermitude. Um, they need to grieve an ending of some kind of competition. Yeah. Okay, I feel like there's more for me to see about this person, but I think it links up here with the other piles. It's like, Spirit, what do I feel like I'm missing? Maybe you feel like you're missing something here about this Um villain i just heard villain um enemy or maybe they feel like they're missing something here about you this person's definitely missing something about them but it's because again they're like not being reflective okay i mean it's really just saying that what i was getting in like these other piles that this person they had a decision to make in the past and it had to do with their values we've already talked about this and i feel like you represented one of those things this person is like seeing you now for everything that it is that you are and they're seeing the energy that they got wrapped up in and i think there's some this this tricky empress energy is like involved they thought they were taking a higher cup they were not in fact taking a higher cup for some of these people there's family involved i don't know if like they had a family with this person or if um i'm hearing like ma like mafia rules like again this is a person who thought that they were in a family it's caused them an immense amount of anxiety um, there's been some kind of like, this is Hecate. That's what I'm saying. This is Hecate's work. She's lighting up this person's darkness, their dark past, their secrets. There's nothing this person can do to like try to, um, prevent this judgment from happening. Like that's really what's going on here. But it's showing me that this person should have been in the two of cups with you, recognizing like where, where they were the fool, the beginner, and that where you were your strength. They should have um, come to you with this two of cups energy. Instead, they came to you with the two of pentacles energy, wishy-washy energy, not knowing where their values lie. It's embarrassing. How are you not embarrassed for the second time in this reading? <laughs> um, it's embarrassing that this person was in this energy presented with this because this was you. 
embarrassing embarrassing um and so yeah this person like didn't follow their heart didn't follow their emotions they do understand something about this i just don't think that you can trust like what this person is saying because they need to work on themselves and that this is there's been a divine intervention here in this um connection hikate is my mvp i yeah, definitely some of you guys work with um hikate like i feel like what 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 does this person not want you to know there's something here that this person doesn't want you to know they don't want you to see them for what they are. Like everything that I'm telling you, basically, that they're sad, that they're grieving, maybe even that they were sexually strategic. This person could have been involved in like third party situations. But again, this person always thought that they were coming back to you because the two of cups. Remember I was saying like this person was um, presented with their two of cups energy in the past and they were like, mm, I'm going to, I need to make some, some decisions. I feel like you're too good for this person in a lot of ways. Like you bring more to the table than this person. And they were like, I got to think about it. <laughs> and you were like, okay. Um, not that you're full of yourself. You just know your worth. And this person was like, oh, well you, the two of cups just comes around. Like I can just put, I can just push pause. Not like this person lacks wisdom. Okay. So this person's actually really sad about, um, losing you, but they're sad about losing, um, something else here. This person, like whatever fucked up thing this person got involved with, they're sad of losing it. Why this person sad of losing it? This villain, um, the king of swords. Yeah. I'm bored of this person's energy. I wonder if you're feeling bored. I'm like, I kind of don't care. Like, because they were trying to strategize their way back to you and they didn't have the full truth and they don't want you to have the full truth because this person, now they love you. It's like, now this person is like, but I love you and I have emotions and I realize I do have a heart. And it's like, okay. I think this person confuses you. And there's something that this person has done or like people that this person is associated with that actually casts quite a bit of doubt of like whatever has gone on here in the past. I'm gonna say one more thing and then I'm gonna have to get up and go to the restroom and then we'll do the, um, the general message my stomach is really really growling <laughs> hungry i'm hearing hungry like the wolf yeah i just feel like i'm picking up on similar energies because this is like sometimes it happens like this where like the third pile or one of the piles kind of like encompasses both and i feel like this encompasses both pile number one and pile number two here somebody's really mad at this person but it feels to me cosmic it feels like a spiritual energy because I think this person has tried to hide quite a bit. Um, so a lot of people have been denied their justice because it's not clear who and what this person is. So spirit is actually pissed off because this person needs a tower moment. They need to face themselves. They need to receive consequence. They need to be related to like they are the person that they are and not the person that they pretend to be. That's what this person needs. Basically like what we all sign up here in the life school. This person is trying to like muscle the life school, like trying to bend it to their will. Um, so this person, their karma is people seeing them for exactly who they are. And you are one of those people and this person deeply cares about it. But there's also like another group of people here as well that they don't want to see. Who is this other group? Oh, they're competitors maybe. Friends that they compete with. Um, friends that these narcissistic friends that I was picking up on that they compete with and they try to act like they're better than. They don't want them to know that they're down and out. Maybe that they've been having financial um, difficulties, that they're morally corrupt. Um, they want people to think that they're like the sanctuary and like where people can kind of come. But now all of this is being revealed and it's this person's karmic justice. They, this person is basically just uncomfortable with being seen for who and what they really are because they like to compete with people. They want to be seen as having the, the happy family. But really this person is, we've already talked about this. They're just, they're controlled and I'm bored. I think that you're bored. I think you're just like, how unfortunate. Ew. Um, I'll just get some advice in case it's important here for this group. Definitely the advice is do not go in for whatever this is. If you are the person that this person's reaching out for, they're trying to lure you. Um, this person has a compulsive need to keep moving on from their past mistakes. Like they just, this person is the type of person who will blow up something. Um, you know, they say like narcissists always end up uh, destroying themselves. This person is living proof of that. I think they've done it on a much smaller scale, literally their entire life. That's like the blockage energy that I was um, picking up on where spirit is like, please don't do this. Please don't do this. Please don't do this. Please pause. Please reflect. Do not pass go. Like, you know, but this person just kept blowing through it and it was smaller and smaller and smaller and started getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And then all of a sudden it's like, they ran into like the big daddy. They can't run anymore. Um, they have a compulsive need to keep moving on and not actually do the the work this person might like to come off as like a pioneer that they have a passion for doing and creating what's not been done before in reality this person is so generic this is just your garden variety assholes what i'm hearing <laughs> um yeah 
I'm hearing you're nobody's fool. Don't be anybody's fool. This person's trying to mooch off of you. Oh, this person's trying to mooch off of you, just like they've done here in the past. They might use humor. Um, when they, this person needs to be fearlessly revealing emotion and the emotion is not happiness and it's not a song and dance. Um, and it's not trying to make you feel it's, they need to cry. They need to be sad. They need to remove their mask is what I'm hearing. And what's behind the mask? This, um, in order to heal, this needs to occur. So it's not like, I think some of you, and I see this in the comments sometimes where people are like, I don't want them to have to go through this because I'm a nice person. And I don't want people to have to suffer, but spirit is saying like, look, this person is a thief. This person has to, or people will continue to get hurt. People are getting hurt by this. This person needs to be confronted with themselves in order to heal. And I think for some of these people, it's like they need to be, this is sanctioned by God. I knew it. And this person, you, this person is a finesser, like with their language. You can't trust the things that this person says because they um, turn a lyric gift into a destructive effect in order to steal. That's what this person does. They might even act like they're a mentor or that they're solving some kind of problems, um, but they're not. This person is atrocious. So don't fall into it. And um, for some of you, like spirit is trying to get you with a healthy mentor. Somebody who passes wisdom and refines a student's character. I don't know who this would be in your life. You would probably already know. Um, I just heard the, the candle um, going off here. So some of you, if you have done candle work or manifesting that or something, I don't know. Um, inability to allow the student to move on to the role of master, imparting fal false instruction. That's who this person really is. This person, again, they like to play the role, but they're not like real. Any other advice for dealing with this? This person pretends to have more knowledge than they actually do. And I think you're um, starting to see through this. Okay. I have to go to the bathroom and then I'm going to come back and we'll do the general massage. Cool. Cool. Oh. Okay, we are back. So, you know, I was just thinking, um, you know that phrase that is like, judge me by my enemies? And it really does strike me that a lot of your enemies think very highly of you, <laughs> so, um, despite being your enemies. And I don't think they quite want to own the position in your life as enemy. I think they would rather be friend, lover, partner, um, something like that. But I think you're like, no, like you have been an enemy and, um, but this person's like, but I like you so much. <laughs> um, so gross. Um, all right. I like to think of this chat as chaotic. Good. Nice. Um, I just woke up from a dream about Archangel Michael Luna. So that's little Luna cat. Um, so there's feminine energy that's coming in here. I kind of feel like there's been feminine energy, protective, motherly, 
spiritual, godly, feminine energy that has been kind of looking over this entire reading and um, looking over this entire situation. They're, okay, you guys have spirit family is what I'm supposed to tell you. Like there's something here that acts like a mother to you. For some of you, it is a mother. For some of you, it's a grandmother. Um, there's just like a mothering energy that looks over you and has kind of been presiding over like these kind of situations. And they're trying to look over your right and your ability to make your own decisions in regards to these people. So especially like the pile number two person where they're trying to just hide who they are and remove your ability to make an honest decision about them. That is just not being allowed. Luna, you want to come say hi to the people? Linny. Um, okay. Whoa. Oh my gosh. I feel like that was from Luna, the ace of cups and the queen of cups. <laughs> um, she sends her love. <laughs> okay. So... All right, spirit, what general message do you have here for the chaos coven, <laughs> for what's going on? Spirit, what do you want to bring to, let's just clear the energy here for a second though, because this has been like a really intense reading. Um, okay, so some of you guys, I feel like you've been wrapped up in something and maybe um, you haven't been taking care of yourself as best you could, like even just like basic kind of mundane things and spirit is just wanting to kind of um, just bring that to your attention like to make sure that you're eating regularly and healthy foods and you know things like that like don't don't put your self-care on the back burner um okay there is an opportunity that is coming in here um and i'm hearing just wait for it all right you have really earned this your ships are coming in and there for some of you i think there could even be a person who is uh, looking like looking at you um we had the devil come out i might just like reshuffle this energy is just hi luna um this energy is just Oncoming. So I don't know if this is karma here with the devil. Yeah, there's some kind of karmic exchange that is um, happening here. Uh, somebody here, I'm not going to allow this to happen. Somebody here is trying to tap into this reading. They really want to talk to you. I feel like it's probably one of these enemy people that we've been picking up on. They would really like to talk to you. This is somebody who has a, an immense amount of sexual attraction to you. They feel like very chained to you. They have a lot of anxiety here, but this person needs to kind of like be dealing with their darkness. This is again, like this person is meant to be going inside like for a hermit mode, but instead it's like they're obsessing about like getting your attention and talking to you. I think this person knows that they put you in some kind of a position here in the past and they're, um, there's a lot of mental anguish. They're really uncertain about an ending here. Like this is all very horrible, like awful, terrible stuff so um there is a karmic justice that's been going around here i do feel like again it's come out many times but this person tied themselves to somebody they should not have um they might want to tell you that it's uh that it's at an ending i don't think that it is um at the very least there's something that is still lingering on here this person is trying to hold on to some kind of like their position uh their partying ways um there could again be people here in the background um that maybe are seeking revenge for this person like because maybe they have kids with them or um this person's like not great with their energy and um but it could just be that like this situation is not done and dusted like it's definitely not not even emotionally is it done and dusted this person is just like running from themselves thank you brody so much for the ten dollars um so like i said i'm let me get maybe another deck here spirit <laughs> This is, okay, spirit is just like, I can't emphasize this enough. You're going through you and like these people that are your enemies. There is a huge period of karmic, like redistributing uh, uh, justification. This is an apocalypse. You are going through some kind of an apocalypse. For you, it is going to lead to a new beginning and some kind of new opportunities, especially as you start um, cutting ties here with these nasty people resolving your karma i do think especially the pile number two person they really could have gone on the journey with you and they did not um you are fully sanctioned now to completely cut all ties with this person and to be like what could have been you know but like you ruined it like you know and just allow them to be like away from you um so as you're cutting these karmic ties and you're wrapping up the karmic cycle within yourself like i said you're learning all that you need to learn here from this it's actually um pushing some kind of karmic kick back here um where there is definitely the energies of anger. So I feel like maybe you feel angry, like whenever you're processing this, that people have um, treated you bad, you know, and you are, um, don't judge yourself for your anger. Cause I feel like it comes up in bursts. It's like, you realize something that these people are definitely your enemies. Cause 
you are a person who leads with love. And I think that you wanted to love these people, both of them. You wanted to accept, you wanted to like be very Libran, but um, you just, you just couldn't. And you can't, these are people you cannot give the benefit of the doubt to. They'll just weaponize it. So I think you are starting to learn that. I'm hearing it was a hard lesson learned, like namaste. Thank you for the lesson, but I'm moving on now. So like the more that you do this, the more that these people are actually being seen. They're going through a period of apocalypse. They're going through a period of revelation and more and more is just, they're getting their karma. And this is all what needs to happen, not just for a karma karmic rebalancing as like a transactional like um move but like for everybody's highest and greatest good this period really needs to happen i feel like spirit is just if you have been like asking for this or like return to sender or i just heard some of these people like if they did do some type of magic because they were narcissists love to project so it's like if they thought that they were trying i don't know they could think that you were doing something and then they were like i'm gonna do a return to sender and then really it's their own nasty energy and their nasty shit that just like zoom, like a like a boomerang just like hit them in the back of the head um they're like kind of bringing it on themselves. Spirit is wanting you to connect with the energy of hope. I just really feel like you've gone through something here, like something harrowing, something that put you in that internal hermit mode. And um, Spirit is wanting you to connect with that here. Um, also, like, I don't know if, um, like, you are so strong. And I don't know if you see this about yourself. And people have tried to, like, hunt you down with a part. You've been met with strategic energy. People have tried to like put this on you. I feel like they people have also strategically tried to make you responsible for something that you were victimized by. Something that um, they actually did. They tried to make you um, receive the punishment for that, which is why spirit is like, oh, we're getting them. Um, and you don't need to be in your strategic mind back. Like obviously protect yourself. Like don't like use your logical mind. Don't like go for low hanging. Don't take the bait. I think you just need to stay away from these people. Um, but also like focus on like, I'm really seeing dancing, like dancing, movement, um, physical activity, connecting with your joy, connecting with your hope, allowing your anger. Um, for some of you, when you get angry, maybe like movement, like going for a run or dancing to like some kind of song that like has high energy that you can like get it out. Like, um, yeah. If you can get out to like some water, maybe do that or like get yourself a new swimsuit or something. Um, somebody here is fixated on your energy and it brings them a lot of pleasure. They think that there's something like a figure of um, great importance or like destiny or something to be associated with you and to think that they're involved with you. But I really think that you've drawn the line here with these people, like whether it's the pile number one person or the pile number two person, they just think that they are even though they're not in your life, it's like this, these people continue to have conversations with you in their mind. They continue to think that they're involved with you when the association has well and truly come to an end. And also there's something, I don't understand this fully, on a soul level, there's something about these people being connected to your energy that has given them the gifts and the opportunities that they have misused. So it's like these people because they were potentially going to make up the karma with you. They were very attractive in this life or they were very um, intelligent or they, they got mixed in with the people that they were mixed in with. So as you're cutting these ties, like all of that is going to start to fade because it doesn't, it's not theirs. It, it doesn't like belong to them. And I don't fully understand this, but again, it's like they only got this because of their association with you on a soul level. And so when you're like, I'm no longer entertaining this. It's all going to like evaporate. I don't even think they're all going to turn on each other like these people. And spirit is saying this is about release here for you. And your anger is a part of that. Um, I'm also hearing drumming. Like, I don't know. I just feel like if you can include your body and like actually releasing the anger in some way you can. Okay. But I want a different message. Like, is it possible to get a different message? Like not to do with these like people spirit. Um, what else do you want to talk to them about? Being hunted for sport, like hunted for sport, left for dead. These are ways that you felt. All right, let's see. I'm hearing, you know, smoke follows beauty, babe. Mm. Oh, okay. I just saw, um, Beth said, love nature, even when it hands me hard work. And the word nature really stuck out to me because I think I was telling you guys, I've been reading the Mahatma letters and, um, it's kind of a dense read a little bit sometimes, but I'm like really learning a lot of things. And one of the things that these um, Mahatmas, these sages said that I will like always take with me is before you become spiritual, you must first become natural. 
So it's like, like the part of you that is an animal, you know, that in, in the best way, you know, like letting the bot, like the, the Mary Oliver quote, like letting the body, the animal of your body love what it loves. So it's like so many people try to like not do the work and everything. Right. And then they just kind of want to be spiritual, but you will misalign with spirituality. If you are like trying to make spirituality your goal, again, you have to like come up through your humanness and part of coming up through your humanness is connecting with your natural self. So the quote is like, before becoming spiritual, you must first become natural. Or if you can't be spiritual, at least strive to be natural, be in your natural state, be your authentic self. Um, and we see this a lot where like, um, sometimes we make spirituality like an objective or a goal and we think that we have to follow all these like things. This is kind of what religiosity is. You know, it's like we think we have to follow all these things and it actually um, circumvents our natural self. But there is a divinity in being natural, like in being the fullest, best, highest original version of um, what it is that we are. And I'm also hearing like the instinctual energy is not necessarily a bad energy and it doesn't always have to be linked with passion or desire. I think that's also something that you've been learning um, with these other these other people you may have had like instinctual passionate or desirous energy towards these people that um because of who they turned out to be you are associating with some kind of negative energy or maybe some of you had an instinct about these people that you um had overridden um in the past so this is about instinct spirit is wanting you to connect with um with instinct and for some of you it's like you do have an animal or like you've been thinking about getting a dog or something and that would also help you as well to just like commune with animals i don't know if like you can sit outside and watch the birds or um in their free habitat like don't try not to go to like a zoo or anything where animals are you know being like caged because i feel like some people tried to pull your instinctual energy in somewhere, throw it off or something. That's part of your lesson is like to trust your instincts. I mean, you have very sharp instincts and um, it's like to trust that. And maybe for some of you, it's like to, like your mind was like, oh, I'm sure they're fine. I'm sure they're okay. But your body knew better or something. And you were like, some off with that person. And um, that's what this is really about. Um, okay. I do feel like Athena, like the energy of Athena is watching you. <clears throat> and is angry at the way that you've been treated maybe you thought athena was mad at you goddess of war goddess of wisdom but athena sees these traits in you and i think has taken personal offense to um your mistreatment and i think she may also have um felt duped in the past uh, that doesn't really make sense to me but like she's upset that like the energy of strategy or um wisdom were like used against you or something i don't know okay like what else though like spirit general message you're beautiful you're worthy you're wonderful you dealt with some energy of temptation and um you have risen above it so again we're seeing this energy in you of like you know pomona is like very beautiful she's very sought after she has everything that she wants but she kind of walls herself off and again vulcan the energy of inventiveness it's almost like these opposite energies where um vulcan like feels like he's very ugly and he wants to be paired like with aphrodite or something like that but i feel like these are two sides to your own nature where you're actually like very inventive and um spirit is wanting you to treat them with equality okay now i understand this okay because i was getting the energy of medusa and if you know the story of medusa it's like she's one of three sisters and she was actually the only one that was born mortal and she was like actually very beautiful um and she didn't have snakes for hair or anything like that and athena actually um saw medusa and saw her potential and came to her and offered her to be an acolyte of her temple taught her the ways of strategy taught her the ways of wisdom taught her the ways of like um divination and spirituality thank you so much janae for the 9.99 oh my gosh <laughs> she said if an alien asked me to take them to my leader i'm bringing them to jess that is gonna terrify me you should probably <laughs> send them to someone with stronger nerves <laughs> um yeah so um like i was saying um Athena really like nurtured Medusa and her qualities and offered her to be an acolyte in her temple. And then she was attacked basically like by Poseidon. And then she got blamed for it as like women oftentimes do. So I feel like there's been some kind of a situation here. And that's when her like appearance changed and then her eyes were able to turn people to stone. And part of the strategy that um, uh, Athena taught her was that to, to think of her beauty as a tool, like another tool in a toolkit. And... So that's why I think that you're 
um, being invited to, you're being invited to bloom and blossom and to connect with your self-esteem and to do nice things for yourself and to lean into your healthy, positive feminine side. I really do like part of the equilibrium here is that you faced some kind of feminine energy that was corrupt and it doesn't have to come through just females. I think, um, quite a bit of this has actually come through males or come through society or like, um, cultures or something where it's like, they'll do anything for money or like they appear to be harmonious or they appear to be loving and in a relationship with you, but really they're just like after luxury or, women or like after something Venusian from you. So this is all being taken care of, but don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Spirit is saying like, you have a very beautiful femininity that actually like kind of produces value. You've been framed for something here. Um, don't let it knock your confidence. Somebody maybe has tried to bridle your wild and free nature here as well. It's reminding me of like Britney Spears in the, um, in her memoir, she said something like, I wasn't manipulative. I was just stupid. And they ruined that for me. And it's like, it's like, yes, like she was innocent and she was trusting and it does kind of, that trusting nature kind of leads to a blindness. I don't think um, Britney Spears is stupid. I think that she thought she could trust people and she didn't really understand that people can be so manipulative. That's my take on it. Um, but yeah, like somebody here is trying to um, play with you. Spirit, there's a judgment energy in the offing. Somebody here likes to shape shift in order to fight. There could be somebody here trying to shape shift in order to fight. Um, cause they see you as like their ultimate pleasure. But, um, so go slow here with this person. You have the higher cup. Um, this is a cycle that's ending. You're going to be moving on. You're going to, your cycles are going up. This person's cycles are going down. Um, and be, just be prepared to enter a time of expansion. I feel like there very well could be a new gateway that's coming in. You might even meet a very significant person. This might be an older woman who is very, um, genuinely beautiful, genuinely jovial, and has that like childlike nature. Who's not like stunted in her growth or, um, immature. And this person might be, um, kind of a gateway to helping you heal in some way, shape, or form. And um, yeah, you can receive some kind of communication here. Um, all right. That's, I think that's what I have here. Cause it's kind of just, I think this was a big enough energy, like whatever this is that, that you were dealing with. And it was, I feel like you're just ending a huge cycle. This feels like lifetimes long. I think that you've been in this for like a long time, whatever this is, it feels very significant and very huge. Um, and I'm even hearing like the, um, the, yeah, like the inner turmoil of like whatever this is. It was so impactful because I keep feeling like maybe I'm boring you by like repeating this and spirit is like, no, this has been deeply impactful. It's something they were in for a long time. People were trying to hide who they really are. And it's just really validating. Like I, spirit is like, trust me, like we need to keep kind of like talking about this. Cause I'm like, can't we talk about something else? Um, Yeah. Oh, I'm so glad. Um, give me back my girlhood. It was mine first. Taylor Swift. Yes, coulda, woulda, shoulda. And I feel like a lot of these people are like, coulda, woulda, shoulda, coulda, woulda, shoulda. Um, and I'm hearing coulda, woulda, shoulda doesn't cut it here. And it shouldn't cut it with you. Um, yes, men in distorted feminine energies. I get that energy a lot on my channel and it confuses me because I'm like, I know it's a feminine energy that I'm tapping into. Actually, one of the readings that I have coming out for you, um, it's, there's one of these piles where I'm like, what is this? Like, I, I don't know who it is that you're asking about. And it's like a, um, feminine energy, but it's like, I think a lot of those feminine energies actually come up through men, but it's, these are men who, um, like, I just get this so strong. These are men who have been feminines, like in a past life. They're, they're, that's why I think they have like, they're jealous of females and they want to be able to operate in the world like a female. They want, like they see f women as getting like certain passes in life. But in reality, like they have been females for a long time. And I think maybe this is a group where maybe you've, you've been men or like you've mastered like the masculine path. So now it's time for you to explore like the other side of it, each of you. And so, um, I think both of you are falling into things that like actually have worked for you. So like the people who are now like feminines in this life and who are working on building their feminine energy, they come from that place of masculinity where it's like, you have to prove your worth by doing, by being upfront, by being straightforward. And I think that's actually what these corrupted feminine energy men are drawn to in you is they see that they know they're supposed to embody that for themselves. But instead, again, they just want like the accolades and like the difference we've talked about this before, but like the difference between masculine and feminine is um, like the feminine uh, rules over life, like life building energies and, um, is ruled over by Venus. Venus is overall a benefic energy, right? Um, and it's life affirming. And, um, there's a certain amount of like value just in being in like a feminine body. And it's seen as like beautiful, beautiful and graceful. And this is literally like actually a fact, like this is used in like market research and planning for businesses, a group of women, like if a company sends out like a scout or whatever, and they see groups of women, 
like hanging out alone or women going out on their own, pushing their baby strollers, that is actually indicative of a place where you really want to put your business because you can make a lot of money, a place where women gather and women feel comfortable. It's the opposite for masculine energies. A group of men is a standing army and it's always been a liability like throughout history. The energies are just not the same. But these like men that I think a lot of you have been dealing with that have this corrupted feminine side, they have been perhaps corrupted feminine energies in their past, like where they tried to use, that's maybe why they're, oh, I get it. They're not, um, they didn't master it the way that you, I think, mastered masculine energy. And now you are um, trying to masculine feminine energy where you just get to be and you get to express and you get to bring your fullest expression like kind of to the table. These are energies where they're not allowed to be masculine energy or they're, they're not allowed to be feminine energies anymore because they can't be trusted with it. They, um, they use it incorrectly. So they've actually have had to live like this particular masculine life, but they're still trying to use those things. They're trying to smooth talk people. And they're very jealous that of like, just, I think they're jealous of women. They have like what I want to call womb envy, but it's really envy about like being seen as like beautiful and appreciated for that. And like, you know, and so they try to kind of like use that. And I think they try to use women in order to like kind of get ahead or something instead of going like going the more traditional like masculine kind of way but at the same time the image for them they know has to somewhat be masculine if that makes sense but there's like that corrupted feminine side and i pick up on that energy quite a lot um to be honest with you but they're not straight up that's what the masculine there's that's what they're meant to learn is like society will expect you to be more straight up like um yeah Guy recently told me that he envies that women can get pregnant. Yes, he is very feminine, not in a good way. Yeah, and I think that they just um, envy like women's spaces and that women get to dress up nice and that women get to, um, they just, I think they just env um, envy like a, the energy that I'm getting with it's like they envy like that feminine way, that feminine life. That's what's under the mask they're afraid of taking off. They're just like really jealous. I am hearing that uh, song, Womanizer. Nico said the pile two person for me is, um, is, ma a mob but is uncomfortable being perceived as male because they don't want to come across as threatening to women and yet they're a womanizer it's weird yeah like there's a real crisis of like identity of um and like i said in pound number two it's like what is success to you and i think yeah they're trying to like pick or choose their identity or something like oh assigned male at birth okay i i didn't know that's what that stood for yeah um yeah all right I am starving. Um, I realized that I thought I ate breakfast today because I was going to have cereal and I looked at the cereal on the counter and then I forgot to eat it. But because I looked at it, I was like, no, I had cereal. And then literally, because I have a headache and I'm like really hungry and I was like, why am I like feeling this way? But it's because I didn't eat breakfast. And that's when I was like, hey, like don't get so lost in your head that like, I feel like the spirit was trying to say like, maybe we're all doing that a little bit, but um, okay, cool. So I'm going to go to Chipotle. Thank you guys for showing up for our Friday weekly witchy hangout. Um, if you guys are on Patreon tomorrow, we have another Patreon live stream. Same time. Um, I will see you then. I am usually hungry after this because it, it is really like depleting and very draining. Um, yeah. So, all right. Um, that's all I have for me. Thank you guys for showing up. I hope you have a really good week. Um, I've got more readings coming out and I will see you then. All right. <laughs> Bye guys.